Well, a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Flight Deck to Sim live stream. Today it's the 25th of March, 2022, seven minutes past four in the afternoon. We're back in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I've got something really exciting for you today. Uh, just Flight, who I've been working with in the past, very kindly sent over their beta or work in progress copy of their soon to be released, or I don't know, soon, but uh, upcoming to be released, uh, BAE 146, an aircraft I've uh, actually had the pleasure of flying in, in x -Plane 11. It's the same development team that are making it for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Later. I had a couple of test sectors where it looks really, really good, and it's the first time actually we could directly compare an aircraft between X Plane 11 and Microsoft Flight Simulator from the same uh, team. Um, looks really promising, some great news. I've been talking to Dev today, uh, Martin, who gave me some feedback regarding some queries I had, which I will point out here, but it's really, really uh, cool. Really enjoyed uh, doing the test sector as well. Uh, cool, so we are in uh, Nice, so I should have said bonjour at the start of the stream. Bonjour, everyone. Uh, nice, Cotter, sir. We're going to be going to Far Road today, flight time of two. 2 hours and 15 minutes. The reason I'm doing this sector is and Nice, this airport here, is one of the uh, hand uh, made airports by the Microsoft Flight Simulator team with SimWorld Update 4 they did and the reason we're going to Faro is yesterday Microsoft Flight Simulator just released SimWorld Update number 8 which includes uh, Spain, the Iberian Peninsula and uh, a large chunk of Portugal and Faro is also one of the hand uh, picked and uh, updated airports included with that. I went to see the scenery uh, with the first sex sector. I was really impressed. It looks really good. This is one of the benefits of this sim is that with these updates they're handcrafting these airports from scratch and they look absolutely mega and this is one of them uh, here in East Coast Desert, which is an airport I've never flown into. Let me just zoom on in towards the aircraft with uh, drone cab and I'll see who we have here in the stream today uh, but just showing you around the scenery here this is a free airport included with Microsoft Flight Simulator SimWorld Update 4 here I mean look they've got all the terminals here and here it's a little bit basic inside but look this is a free update um, and the quality of it is, is absolutely immense. There you go. You see the French and European flags uh, floating away here. But uh, yeah, it's absolutely mega that they actually do these updates to give you the aircraft there. Anyway, we are flying 30. Air France today. 20. We've never got uh, Frog Air Lights. <laughs> so it's going to be really cool. Here it is. Look at the detail of this aircraft. Thank you. The ground crew on pushback and start for the 146 can imagine what it's like to be in a Pantan advert. What, Matthew? Grow oh. Oh, okay. Hair dryer's got you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matthew M for the fiver. The ground crew on pushback and start. The Waffle Six can imagine what it's like to be in a Pantene advert. Yes, because they are going to be sat behind these four hair dryers uh, bolted under the uh, uh, BAE 146. Unbelievable. It took me about took me about four or five seconds to get that. But uh, yes, uh, I, I see what you're going on about there. Superb. Thank you very much for your kind donation as well. Right, uh, let me just slow the old drone speed down here as we're a little bit close to the aircraft. I can see the shadow of the ground crew moving around here. Uh, let me just see who we've got here in chat as well. I can't zoom in and do that at the same time with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, Garmi, best for now, says hi. Hope you're doing well. Cam, PBZ, 17 more minutes. I was here before the stream. Sorry for the slight delay. Having a, a few issues with the overlay, uh, which I still couldn't get sorted. So if you look here, just not bring up any information. I might try again later. It might be because the aircraft's powered down. I don't know, but we'll have a play of it later. Uh, Hope Tex is here. Breadmaster, I'm at the airport now flying up uh, to Midway. Very good. That's a long way to go. Um, while we wait, let's play I Spy. Very quick, quick sense. Thank you very much. Moen is the aircraft sponsored by a UK based electrical retailer. Uh, who am I thinking of? I'm, I, these things go over my head when I'm streaming. I missed that one there. Also, Qatar Motors in chat playing massive catch up here. Uh, Domino Mosina, does BAE stand for Bring Another Engine? Unbelievable. Uh, Lolo Lankras, when I was there, there was an unattended bag on the floor, pointed out security, seemed to be confused as to why I was telling them. Very good to do that. Uh, when you're at airport, you want to work out what's going on. Yes, four APUs on this um, aircraft, of course. Um, anyway, thank you very much to all of you who have popped in. And here is the BAE 146 by Just Flights. Now, BAE, uh, what do you know what I mean? Just Flight have wanted me to stress that uh, this is a work in progress still. It isn't the version that you'll get on release. They have a lot more features to add. Not everything is modeled, but you can fly it from A to B using conventional navigation, which is what we're going to be doing today. Um, and really enjoyable. Uh, performance in handling is very similar to the aircraft in X-Plane 11. I was pleasantly surprised by that. Um, there is some issues with regards to the Microsoft Flight Simulator. The drag model at high speed is, is not that accurate, so 
is not too much drag, which means resultingly we're burning a lot less fuel, but we'll point out most of those things here, but just to show you the quality of this aircraft and the detail, look at how good everything looks here, I mean it's super clean, you can see the engine oil there, here's one of the turbofan engines, it is literally an APU isn't it? <laughs> I had the pleasure of flying one of these as a passenger years and years ago, uh, going to uh, Memmingham, I think it was. I can't remember what the airline was. I was quite a young boy, but uh, I have flown on this aircraft as uh, a passenger before. But uh, the Whisper Jet, as it is known, there you can see the anhedral on the wings. Here's the main gear. All the detail is really nice. Unusual design. Strut there to look at everything here. I'm an expert drone camera uh, pilot here. Have um, you got to do a London City approach one stream? Well, we've completed it already. When I did the X Plane 11 inaugural stream of the BAE 146, I did Dublin to London City, so I've completed it, mate, as Jay would say on the in between us. <laughs> um, but uh, we could perhaps look at doing it again in the future. But there we are, very nice. And I thought it'd be quite cool to go Air France today. We've never flown this airline. Um, very, very nice. All the technical specs for the 146 are included with the aircraft. The manual is very detailed. You've got a cabin in here as well. I'll just go on there. Uh, yet uh, to be completed. There's uh, otherwise a, a basic cabin for now, but I think there's some more features coming with regards to that. So moving over to the left wing. But yeah, look at the reflections here underneath the wing uh, on the fuselage. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, that was it. Uh, trailing link main gear. Very fancy. I think that's what it's called. So basically the strut is not vertical, it's horizontal. Um, I mean, this takes back to my HPL days looking at all the different gear designs, but um, after you land, all the compression takes part here. But uh, yeah, I couldn't remember the technical term for it. But there you go. Well, imagine we've completed our walk around and uh, best we jump on into the cockpit of the Air France 146. So this is the 100 variant of the 146. It's the only one available at the moment. They are, of course, going to be making all the variants available upon release. Um, the 200 and 300. So this is the little baby small version. Uh, but uh, there we are, jumping into the cockpit. So, uh, flying this aircraft, what I'm doing is I'm following the included tutorial um, with it, which I'll bring up for you to see. So I'll be reading this on the side to get it all set up. It's based on a tutorial flight. I think it was from East Midlands to uh, Edinburgh, uh, but obviously we've jigged it the routing slightly so I'm just following this regards to getting the aircraft set up it's not a, a full comprehensive detailed setup but it gets everything set up as required to get the aircraft 50, um, 40, operating 30, uh, not at 20, a bare minimum it covers most 10. things but it does probably uh, skip some checks needed uh, Anon thanks to the fiver buddy Bonjour Capitaine, j'espère que tu vas bien et je suis sûr que tu me comprends Sorry Anon I don't speak French I did do it at GCSE I got a C grade. Uh, all I remember is going, ah, je m'appelle Flight Deck to Sim. Uh, J'adore la aviation. <laughs> I don't know. There you go. That's my French exhausted. Thank you very much, Aidon, for the fiver. Really appreciate it. Hope you're doing well as well. Uh, Pascal, when will it be released? Release date is yet to be confirmed. If you look at the pinned comment under the video description, uh, you'll be taken to a link to the development page on Just Flight of this aircraft where you can uh, subscribe to be kept up to date with regards to development and release as well. Uh, excellent. Right. So, aircraft is completely cold and dark. All I did uh, prior to the start of the stream uh, was open all the doors. Just turn this music right down there. Um, and we're in the cold and dark state. Um, we've got 60 passengers. I think the capacity was about 80. Uh, no cargo. I've preloaded the fuel, which we'll look at shortly with regards to the operational flight plan. We are on Vatsim, no ATC at the moment. Uh, there are, they are all RNAV SIDs out of uh, Nice, but we are going to request if ATC does come online to find omnidirectional departure to our first en route uh, waypoint, which is the Saint Tropez VOR. Uh, right, so let's get it all powered up. Um, so first thing it says is verify the weather radar is off they are going to be modeling a weather radar but there's limitations in Microsoft Flight Simulator with regards to how the weather radar should work so it is something they'd like to work on in the future uh, working our way down here it says make sure the transponder is set to standby uh, which it is verify the air brake is in the in position and we can now power up the electrical system so let's get the ground power connected love it the sounds Abeds, just that big clunky diesel generator. What we do in turning up Microsoft Flight Simulator slide as well. There we go. Now I probably want to turn it down. <laughs> GPU 
use loud. There we go. So now we have a source of AC power for the aircraft. We can go up here onto the overhead panel. We'll pop the batteries on. There we are. The shop door bell opens. I love that so much. I uh, confirm that the battery ammeter is showing a discharge, uh, which it is. So we need to get some AC power selected as soon as possible. So external power on. There we are, and now the battery is showing a slight charge, which is what you want to see. You don't want to see it still discharging after you've connected a source of AC power. Um, there we are, so with electrical power now supplied, the master warning system cautions could be triggered at various stages of the flight, cancel them as required. Uh, on the upper light panel, we need to turn on the navigation lights to high, so that's all the way up here. So high, that tells the ground crew we have AC power connected. Uh, no smoking sign to auto. Switch is a bit all over the place in the 146. You've got the no smoking sign down here, the cabin emergency lighting, but the seatbelt sign, I think, is somewhere, yeah, obscure. There we are. It's down there. Perfect. So we've got some power, and you can see, look, if we look outside, we've got the nav lights on, the green starboard, the port, uh, minimums, red lights. Minimums. Minimums. Um, approaching minimums. Perfect. Let me have a look at some of the questions coming in. 17 months of Pete. Pete. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Uh, this brings back memories. I had seat 1A or 1C every Monday and Friday between Birmingham and Edinburgh for over 12 months when BA had the route. Very cool p -test. Yeah, you'll be hopefully replicating some of that. I'll go and sit in your seat, let's say, uh, on the way too far. Right, thank you very much for your continued support as a member, buddy. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, low, 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 ding, ding, service, please. <laughs> to sound just like that. Uh, according to devs, they plan on release at the end of April. Thanks that SK, sir. I wasn't aware of that. But yeah, we'll look at... Um, I got a, a lovely email from the dev. I gave him some feedback based on some things I noticed, some things I, where I'm, I'm familiar with the 146 auto clarification, some of the things I noticed regarding drag and things like that. And there are mostly limitations to Microsoft Flight Simulator as opposed to the aircraft. So what just like are doing the... the Martin I spoke to is a bit of a 146 nut, a uh, bit of a massive fan, uh, really wants this to be as close to the real thing as possible and um, they are working hard to ensure that that is uh, capable within the, in the simulator at the moment. Um, perfect, right let's carry on, where's the setup there? Uh, I'm going to Faro in August said Jamie Box. very cool, very nice, I've flown into Faro I, well, I'll look at my logbook later, I, I would be surprised if it's approaching 100 times, so it's a very popular destination uh, for tourists all over Europe. Um, perfect, so we've put our lighting on, centre panel, we're going to verify the gear is down, and we have the three green lights, there we are, left gear, nose and rear gear are green. Uh, on the centre console, confirm that the brake selector is set to yellow, so the parking brake is set and set to yellow. Uh, going to the right, to the top of the overhead panel, we're going to turn on your damper, autopilot, and avionic switches. So your damper, autopilot, and avionic switches. Minimums. Minimums. Approaching minimums. All on. Perfect. Uh, have they fixed the mouse bug in 2020 yet? Yes. So, I think for me, I have not had the mouse cursor disappearing on the test sectors. It did once, but I just wiggled the mouse and it did come back. But uh, I'm ho hopefully that's the end of that. Uh, ADS Legends, nine months as a member. Thank you very much. Okay, dad joking coming. What did the alpaca say to his date? Want to go on a picnic? Alpaca lunch. Uh, I don't have my soundboard up, but I, I think um, it's worth me actually getting the soundboard out there for a bit of reaction. <laughs> Professional streamer here. Uh, I can't even find it. This is just, that was just an outrageous thing to say. Where is my soundboard? Here it is. Oh, uh, that's definitely a... No, it was the wrong one, but there you go. Thank you very much, ADS Legends. <laughs> Whoops, there's a membership for a, a, a cringy joke. <laughs> Appreciate it, nonetheless. Oh, thank you for your continued support there. Unbelievable. Um, our Raycon, it's not disappearing, but it doesn't allow dual input. Oh, so they've still got the bug where if you're looking with the right mouse down here, you can't make inputs on the control column. That's a shame. Uh, excellent. So we've got the green lights on the gear. We've got the your damper autopilot navy on. The switches on. Um, back on the overhead panel. We need to turn on anti skid and lift spoilers. So they are up here, I believe. Still not a big fan of getting used to the camera system. Ah, look. So my mouse cursor has actually genuinely 50, disappeared now. 40, so yeah, the 30, bug is still 20, here. 10. There you go. That fixes it. Thank you, uh, Galormi for the five US dollars, buddy. You're very close to my hometown of Monaco. Maybe I'll wave at you on takeoff. We'll go the wrong way, aren't we? Uh, we'll get my <laughs> get my map out. Thank you very much for the five dollars, buddy. Very nice. I wish I was from Monaco. Um, 
lovely. Thank you very much for your donation. And uh, we'll imagine we've got some French or Monegasque passengers going to fire today. Thank you very much, buddy. Appreciate it. Um, superb. Right. Um, we have... What did we get to? Uh, Anti-skid lift spoilers on. So anti-skid lift spoilers on. And we don't need to turn the brake fans on just yet. Uh, moving to electrical panels. Set both bus tie switches to auto. There we are, bus tie switches to auto. Uh, set the standby inverter and generator standby to arm. They are in the arm position. Set both engine generators 1 and 4 to off reset, uh, which is down here, which they're already in that position. And put the APU generator on. It's a bit airbusy this aircraft, so once you've got the APU generator on, you don't need to switch buses like you do in the 737, you just, just turn up the APU off or the GPU off and it switch power for you. Um, switch on the fuel pump, it says at least the left inner pump, well, I'll just turn all four pumps on to provide pressurisation fuel flow for the APU. We'll get the APU started now. What is the temperature here in uh, Nice? I think it is... Nice day. 15 degrees Cav OK, QNH is 1024. It's a glorious day here at Nice. Let's crank up that APU. Got the fire trucks on standby. Have they heard something? Actually, we're not flying our back airways, it's Air France. Look at the bottle though, it is absolutely beautiful. No, fly Live's still broken. I'm just gonna turn Fly Live off and on again. I did try that, but it didn't work earlier, whilst we're waiting for the APU to start up. AP generator on all four engines start. Brilliant. So, Nice. Lima Papa Foxtrot Romeo. We are Air France. 1-4 Alpha Foxtrot. Okay, let's try Fly Live one more time. No, it still doesn't seem to be working. And I have Microsoft Flight Simulator as the uh, SIP Connect, so i um, not sure why it's not working. Today. Oh well, I'll just have to keep it posted with regards to ETA and things. Perfect, so APU is up and running, APU power is available. So all I need to do, if I actually just disconnect the external power, look, boof, it's off and it's already switched over to the APU and I can actually disconnect the um, ground power now. There we are. Uh, the battery is still charging. Yeah. Mouse cursor bug is here still, which is a bit of a pain. Um, right, APU power's on, we can now test the master warning system. So, let's return to the captain's seat. And we need to push this one in. There we are. Like a Christmas tree, we've got master warning, master cautions. All of these lights are on. Many dings. Perfect, hopefully we'll have as few of those lights on as possible. Right, that's tested. We'll reset the Master Caution. Oh, is the red a Master Caution? I'm guessing that's Master Fire. A fire warning light? Not so sure there. Um, is this an Avro? So I think it's the it is the BAE 146, but Avro is the Simbri flight plan I'm using, because apparently the fuel burn's a little bit more accurate, but I believe it's based off the the, uh, the BAE 146, not the Avro. Um, version. Uh, right, so we test the master warning system. It says you can test all the various ground systems here, so for example, stall warning. Again, it sounds like the A-10 Warthog cannon. Oh, how do I turn it off? Oh, <laughs> must be a bit annoying to have that for the entire sector. Uh, test number two, look, you can actually see it there shake, which is pretty cool. Excellent, so we'll imagine all the other tests are done. Right, we need to test the hydraulic systems now, so we're just testing the functionality of the system and then once the engines have started we'll use engine 1 and 4 to provide hydraulics, so verify that, uh, set the AC pump to on. There we are, so you can see, so do they have, it's different coloured systems I think, so you can see the PSI increasing on that hydraulic system. And then we need to do for the PTU, the power transfer unit's going to then transfer hydraulic power to pressurise the other systems. I think it's just a functionality test at this stage. And that's what it should look like uh, after the engines have started. We've got sufficient hydraulic quantity as well, so we'll turn that off and turn off the AC pump as well. You can hear it all whirring away in the background. Um, arm the flight deck emergency lighting, which I've done. We can now turn on the yaw damper, which is down here on the pedestal. Yaw damper 1 and 2 are on. 
Uh, finally on the right hand side panel, open the oxygen main valve and confirm supply using the test feature on both. So let's move over here. So we're going to turn on there. So we've got main supply oxygen and passenger supply oxygen sufficient pressure as well. That's really cool. So, so much modelled here. Ah, the minigun, absolutely, guys. Um, Kof Norfolk International Approach. I'd like to see if you know where I can find that aircraft. Are you talking about this one? Um, it's not released yet, but if you look in the video description, you'll have a link to the Just Fly page so you can see all about the aircraft and uh, its progress during development. Um, perfect. So, your dampers are on. We check the oxygen. Um, we can now retract the air stairs. Now, to retract the air stairs, I've got to actually get hydraulic power. Uh, it's hydraulically powered here. So, you can see here, if I go to stairs, it won't actually retract because I need to get hydraulics. Um, so, let's do that again. We're going to put the uh, AC pump on and power transfer unit on. And now, I should be able to retract these stairs. There we go. So, imagine the passengers are boarded. Clunk. I love a sim with clunking door slamming sounds. Forward passenger doors closed. Welcome. Yes, please do arm scroll. Arm doors and cross check. We'll close that one, close that one, close the cargo. We'll close everything and uh, we'll take the chocks off as well. Parking brake is set. Excellent. We'll turn the PTU back off and the AC bump too. Thanks for subscribing there. Uh, Charlotte Cron, welcome aboard. Um, bro, someone said. Uh, Ian Chan, FMS implemented, not at the current stage. Uh, but it is coming. Uh, in, the, in this is remember a work in progress build a beta build. So we're going to be using conventional navigation. However, what I do quite like is if I bring up the navigation map here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you load the routing into what I do, minimums, I copy minimums, my minimums, sim brief flight plan routing minimums. into Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, so sort of the sim knows where I'm going. And if you so wish, you could switch to RNAV at this stage and if I do that now look you'll see look 37.6 and your HSI will point towards it um, you can use the Microsoft Flight Simulator planned routing and select LNAV and it'll follow the routing you programmed it which is quite a nice touch I quite like that until they obviously have their FMS and their, then that will implement using the FMS but until then using Microsoft Flight Simulator is pretty cool um, Alfie Douglas thank you very much for the 33 months as a member almost three years uh, is it wrong to get rid of customers so you can watch a flight deck sim stream at work <laughs> Alfie Douglas don't get me in trouble now <laughs> Don't get yourself in trouble. Unbelievable. Thank you very much, buddy, for popping in. And you're 33 months as a member on this channel. Absolutely outrageous. Thank you very much, buddy. Uh, amazing. Uh, Van Nuts. The subscription sounds are so annoying, man. Oh, I can tell it's a Friday. Uh, I like them. I like them a lot. Welcome. <laughs> Why don't you subscribe for yourself to see? <laughs> uh, it's just, I quite like it. It's just subtle in the background, not big and annoying. And, uh, like the other ones are. Uh, perfect. Right. So navigation we talked about briefly there. Shut the doors, and we can now complete the full start checklist. So confirm the parking brake is set. The thrust levers are in the fuel off position. So there's no start levers here. You just simply notch it to on when we start the engines. Uh, on the overhead panel, confirm that the hydraulics are off. They are. We just turn them off now. Fuel panel set. Center tank transfer switch to auto so we do have a little bit of fuel in the center tank i believe it uses the fuel in the center tank first then the fuel in the wing tank similar to the 737 but i believe you don't need to do it that way um so center tank center tank transfer is in the auto position um on the pressurization panel we're going to be cruising initially at 29,000 feet states so we need to rotate this to 29,000 feet there we are that's going to give us a cabin altitude of 8,000 feet uh, moving down to the ice protection panel, we want to make sure that the ice detect switch is on. The others will come on after engine start. Uh, make sure we have sufficient fuel for the sector as well. So let's have a quick look at the operational flight plan. Grab it here. So here it is. Uh, we are routing from Nice to Faro, Air France 14 Alpha Foxtrot. Um, the wretch is slightly different to the one in the sim. Zero fuel ice 28.8, so that's our 60 passengers and their carry-on baggage. Um, 290 initially, a beg we're going to go up to 310. We need 8.1 tonnes of fuel. Okay, so sort of cheating here. If you add all this here, we are taking standard fuel. The weather is really nice uh, for the entire sector and en route. And just to sort of demonstrate how the fuel burns a little bit um, 
conservative at the uh, conservative at the moment. It burns a lot less fuel than what the flight plan is saying. This flight plan I have here in the X Plane 11, the fuel burns very close here because of Microsoft Flight Simulator's drag model. We're burning a little less, so we'll happily take standard fuel. So we have 8,111 kilos. We only require 8,047. So that's the fuel sorted. So fuel, we're fine. We satisfied that in the checklist. So we can carry on there. Sufficient fuel for the flight. Uh, first officer side panel confirmed in today's data set the flight data recorder. Which I think is all the way down here. It's a little bit awkward to get to. So today it's the 25th of March. And you can then put the number in if required. Flight leg is set to 1. Um, how do I change that? Not so sure. Anyway. We'll imagine that's all set. Um, now we're going to go to our transponder and put in our call sign. So, we select FID mode. So, ATC FID. And it's like the old phone text. You press it uh, once, twice to get to A, and then press this uh, four times to get to F, as it was on your Nokia all those years ago. Air France 1. Four. Alpha. Ah, pressed it too many times. Alpha and then Foxtrot. There we go. Once that's in, we press Enter, and we can go back to ATC for our squawk, uh, which should be set to two thousand. Uh, so transponder panel is set, uh, now it's time to load up the TMS, so there's no water throttle on this aircraft, but you have this thrust modulation system, which I think it stands for that, it allows you to fine tune the N1 or the auto throttle, or not auto throttle system, this system TMS will move each individual thrust lever to ensure you have your takeoff thrust setting as required, your sync, so it'll make sure the N1's are the same to harmonise all the thrust there. So for this we need to power it up, uh, so it's on, we'll press the test button so it does a self test. Put the outside air temperature in. Ah, I see Cam's pilot's here. Cam's pilot's part of the dev team. Very useful to have. <laughs> Thank you very much. Call me out on everything I miss out, please. Uh, yeah, temperature is 15 degrees, which we can set there. Uh, press the takeoff button. And we have the M percentage display. We'll now show the M1 setting for the current pressure altitude. Selected ambient temperature and engine anti ice setting. We need to now set the targets on our maximum climb temperature to 840 degrees. So cams pilot if you're here can we have a sync feature because you have to do each individual one i know it is realistic but it'd be nice to be able to sync this instead of having to do it each one individually because in reality you just twiddle it in a second you don't have your setting there but thankfully my mouse i can unlock the, the uh, middle mouse wheel and spin it very quickly so 840 and then we need to set the n1 percentages as well With regards to reduced takeoff thrust, I don't know how they do it in this um, here. They'd obviously use a performance graph or table, and then they'll be able to work out the N1 required and reduce it accordingly. So 840 is set, and then we just set the N1 figures here, 93.7, and all count should be chance, 120%. Yeah, you don't want to be on that thrust setting for too long. 93.7, uh, so we'll round that up to 94. TMS will find you on that. I'm going to go full thrust for departure here. Excellent. So, that's all set. Let's have a little catch up here uh, with chat. Um, 737M Cass, I just was commenting on that. Uh, yeah, Boeing, not smart. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, I'm not reading any more of that. Fix that, thankfully. Um, Cam's pilot, I think the Simbri profile is for the RJ100, so the longer and heavier variant also impacting fuel burn. God, I, my Simbri profile was for the baby version, I think, um, which I have flown. I flew the Formula One. Yeah, this is the RJ70 Simbri profile, which I think is the same as the, the 100. Am I meant to use a higher one, maybe, or something? I don't know. I have used this and flown the 100, the F1 100. The fuel burn was pretty spot on. I looked at the stream earlier there. Um, make sure to set Air France as your call sign. Vatsum ATC gets quite annoyed when you set AF. Oh really Steph? Oops. Well 
I didn't know that. I just put my pursuit boots. So yeah, didn't know, never flown out of France. Um, quickest method is to use a speed card, click spot to set them automatically, but we are adding a sync button too. In hindsight then, I wish I'd read that comment first, but what I'll do now, the beauty of this is, it automatically updates your gross weight look, 37 tonnes. You press this look and it'll set all your speeds for you for departure, which is, is mega, and I think it's V2 plus 10 or something, so that's set, and I'm guessing it would have set, yeah, like 857, it's set all my temperatures for me. God damn it, that's useful, but we'll use that there. Uh, AF equals Air Force. <laughs> Got you, all right. Hold on. I will have to refile my flight plan then, I guess. Um, we'll have a look at that there. Um, excellent. Hey, Cap, happy Friday, guys and girls. Thank you very much, Simple Takeoffs. Welcome aboard. Right, let me just refile my... Is there actually Van Sim here? Well, no, I'd best do that. I'd best do that. Let me just... Uh, I'm just going to nip into Sim Brief flight plan pre-file, and literally all I need to do is AFR 14 Alpha Foxtrot file flight plan. There we are. I'll just disconnect from Vatsim. And I'll reconnect with Alpha Foxtrot Romeo 14 Alpha Foxtrot. There we are. I should now have the correct call sign. Whoops. Go with Air Force One. <laughs> I know Air Force would be cool. Um, superb. Right. Performance is done for departure, TMS is all set, and we've updated the performance by pushing the bug card, and the reference speeds have been set as well. Uh, VORs then, so we need to tune our first VOR for departure. Um, so to turn this on, we'll push that button here. There we are, and thanks to Martin from the dev team, I now know how to turn this one on, because I couldn't remember. There we are. I was having problems earlier, and I couldn't get the... DME and Nave to work. That's because I didn't turn it on by rotating that inner knob. Um, we're flying inbound to the Saint Tropez VOR initially. Just lost my mouse cursor there. So it is 16.5. I should have to preset that actually. 16.5. Make that active. There we are. It's come alive and we just turn the DME to on. It just takes a few seconds and then we'll get the DME information here. There we are, 37.5, and put Saint Tropez. Yeah, so they have. I must ask you guys how to fix this mouse cursor bug. Uh, some people seem to not have it, I, I definitely do. 16.5, excellent, we've got the DME distance there. Excellent, that was great, I've got Nav 2 working now. Um, so Nav A to set the runway heading. Bring up Navigraph here. Uh, Spectating is runway 04 left for departure. TC at the moment. Uh, so from a QDM is 043. So looking down here at the HSI, 043. And when we get airborne, uh, looking at the operational flight plan, the direct track to the Saint Tropez uh, VOR magnetic track, where are you? It is uh, 223. So I'm just going to set the courses to 223. And this is basically to fly. That's going to take us. We're on the uh, you know, uh, 223 VR direct. That's what I'm looking for. Let me just find my nav chart just to make sure I'm getting, getting this the right way around. Yeah, sorry. We're flying 223, so the reciprocal inbound uh, into that radial. So that would be 043. Flying inbound on the 043 radial. Uh, 223 on the first stops aside. And we're going to fly this omnidirectional departure because all the SIDs are on our based uh, at the moment. So that is all set. Uh, course is set. Uh, there's no ATC at the moment. Uh, omnidirectional departure doesn't mention any stop altitude. So what I'm actually going to do is climb to... Let's go to 6,000 feet. I'll aim to level off there. Um, we could arm that later. Oh, it does say press out arm now. I'm going to do... It won't let me. Do that later. Uh, maybe I need the flight directors on. We'll pop those on now. The flight directors are on. Uh, not using ADF for departure. The RMI is set to VOR, VOR. So that's uh, showing that. We've got 37.5. And we're all ready for engine start. So just want to talk about the departure briefly. Um, let me bring up Navigraph again. So routing's really nice today. Look, we are departing from Nice, flying along the south coast of France. Uh, directly overhead Barcelona. Look at that routing. Then heading off towards south of Madrid, or 
um, or eastern and south of Madrid. Uh, Seville, and then onwards to Faro. Really nice routing. Um, so, if I bring up the charts here for Nice, if I can remember how to. Let's close that there. Open chart list. All of these SIDs here, guys, are RNAV based. Every single one of them. And we're not uh, RNAV compliant in this aircraft today. However, right at the bottom, it does have this omnidirectional. Are nav omni directional departures now? I, what I find unusual with Navigraph is, on my operator's chart, they are just called omnidirectional departures. It says if you're non R nav equipped, request omni directional departure from ATC. On Navigraph, they say R nav omni directional departures, and R nav one is required, so just basic R nav, which we sort of kind of have with DME, and also yeah. with regards to um, the, the Microsoft Flight Simulator L nav feature. And we are departing off zero four left to right, so this is what we're going to do: is 420 feet. Turn right, climbing to the assigned flight level in the sector between 105 and 180. So we're just going to uh, basically 500 feet, turn right, and that's for noise abatement. And then we'll go on our way. Now we're going to fly an NADP-1 departure here out of Nice. So that means what I'm going to do is get to 500 feet. I'm then going to make a right continuous turn all the way until we are inbound to the VOR. And I'm not going to start accelerating until I reach about, what's the elevation here, sea level. I'm not going to start accelerating until we reach 3,000 feet. So that's what we're, we're going to do. Um, so yeah, that's the, the SID covered. Taxiing, we're on stand 15, which is this uh, remote stand, which is just... Where are you? There we are. Taxiing straight ahead, it's going to go on Delta. And then we'll probably go either Tango or Uniform. And then from Uniform, uh, all the way to whole point zero four left via Alpha. So that is it. Guys, we are pretty much ready to start the engines. Um, catching up here with chat. Uh, N2 equal, uh, said AFI equals alpaca frauds. Brilliant. Uh, do any of you use Smooth Track for Microsoft Flight Simulator? If you don't, do it. I have no idea what that is. Um, Lucy, RJ85 or BAE146, same aircraft. The RJ85 is the 146-100. Get me if I'm wrong. Um, <laughs> if you file as Air, Air Force AC, we'll only speak to you in French just to be awkward. Unbelievable. Um, Gilami, the mouse, the mouse bug comes from plugging your mouse in an overloaded USB mini port. Try plugging it right into the computer and remove the issue for me. My mouse is plugged right in the back of my PC. I'm not using a, a USB uh, extender adapter, so that's I don't think that's the issue there. Uh, oh, Pascal, the devs said the mouse bug will be fixed in SU. Nine next month. Okay, why not SU8? <laughs> it's been there months. That will probably fix it then. Um, Janks, I still don't understand why people focus on Microsoft Flight Sim 8 instead of looking at x 12, which is very promising. They're both looking very promising. I love both Sims. Uh, Cam's Pilot, we love Microsoft Flight Sim 8 x 11 12, with both having their own strengths and weaknesses and both improving constantly. Well, that's hitting a nail on the head. Perfectly said, Cam's Pilot. Very, very well said. It's exactly my. Uh, point there as well. Uh, Hamza, who's watching both V1 Sim and Flight Sim? Is he streaming again today? I tried to avoid when V1 is streaming. I didn't realise he was lying there. I did see him streaming the uh, MD11. Now, I don't want to distract from this stream this much. Here. We've got plenty of time in the crew to talk about it, but I was about to buy the MD11. I've sort of been told to hold back. I did watch a bit of V1 stream yesterday and some others. It seems to be a little bit half-baked uh, at the moment. A lot of problems with LNAV, not following the FMS routing. It's been four and a half years in the making. I fully respect the, the work and input has gone into that. Maybe I'll hold off a little bit. I will purchase it at some point, definitely. But I, from what I understand, there's a lot of stuff not working in that aircraft, so uh, we'll, um, we'll, we'll might hold off there. We'll might hold off. Uh, right, anyway, we've got the 146 all set up and ready to go for engine start. I'll just double check, make sure there's no ATC. There isn't. Uh, so we'll go over to Unicom. 228. Uh, I'm using my radio tuning panel, which is all working correctly. It does help if I turn the radios on, though. There we are. There we go, and that is the active frequency. If there's any other traffic here, I need to look at getting all the CSLs downloaded now for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I currently don't have them. Um, perfect. Uh, Michael, avoid for now from what I've seen. Yeah, MDM is junk in its current state. Yeah, I've, I, I, you know, I think it needs a lot of work from what I've had. I need to watch a bit more of you on stream and some others, but uh, might hold off for a short while then. But um, I think from what people were saying, the MD80, when that was released, was the same, and then they, they released two large patches, which basically 
improved it significantly, so hopefully I'll uh, do the same. Right, um, edge of start then. No ATC, so I imagine we've got our clearance. So Air France, one for Alpha Foxtrot, cleared to Faro. Omni directional departure. Uh, after departure, right turn direct to Saint Tropez. Climb to altitude 6,000 feet, score 2,000. Excellent, so all passengers aboarded the aircraft, fast seatbelt sign is on, we've retracted the air stairs, we can now switch on the beacon light, which is all the way up here. Um, set the APU air switch to off, which is down here, APU air switch is currently off. Uh, confirm both pack switches are off, release the parking brake, begin push back and start the engines, verify all fuel pumps are on, which they are. So we're pretty much ready for engine start, so Air France, one for Foxtrot, stand 15, request engine start, start approved, and we can now uh, get on our way. Um, now, guys, I really wanted to use the Boeing yoke and thrust levers today. Again, time was of the essence, having completed two test sectors with the joystick, I was all comfortable with that. I really would love to use the um, yoke with the four thrust levers, which I'll do next time I fly this aircraft. Um, once I get another update from the dev team, because it would be so cool to have the four engines as well. I still haven't got that set up in Microsoft Flight Simulator yet. Um, right then, so starting engines on the 146. Quite a simple process. Uh, we need to go up here and we need to put the start master switch uh, to on. We then rotate which engine we'd like to start first, which would be engine number four. We're going to go four, three, two, one, and you just simply click start. There we are. Many noises, and we're looking for N2 rotation, which is here N2, N1. Where's oil pressure? Oh, up, up here. It's a little bit late on oil pressure. And I think I need to get the fuel in already. What point do I get the fuel in? It is 15% N2, which are well above here. No oil pressure yet, though, which is alarming. In reality, you'd wait for that. So we'll just move that to on. There's oil temperature increasing. There's the oil pressure rising very, very slowly. But the quality of these gauges is cool. You can see it is increasing. Excellent. Uh, John loves aviation. How do you feel about the PMDG 737? Do you think you'll switch to Microsoft Flight Simulator? There is no for me switching between sims. As Cam's pilot said perfectly, I 110% agree with him. Both sims have their strengths and weaknesses. And I'll continue to use both the Zebo mod and the PMDG 737 upon release of Microsoft Flight Simulator. What I'll be able to do is give you a good comparison between the two and tell you how it feels, um, which will be really exciting. Good start on engine number four. Let's go to number three. Uh, so number three, and again, start. I love that noise it makes. You can see how much power it draws as well from the battery. Look at the amps uh, increase. So N2, N1. Yeah, you can see yeah, the oil pressure definitely increases because look at engine number two, that's on zero. You can see it's at about um, 1,000 PSI there. So, let's get, oh, it's the camera system in this sim. Still getting used to it. Number three. Cabin crew are banging around in the, in the galley. <laughs> All right, uh, you can put thrust levers to idle at 10% N2. Ah, very good. Well, I was about 20 on both of them there. I've just wanted a tutorial which has 15. Certainly the whisper gen. So the autopilot on this is all working. I've got the sync feature working on my joystick. I don't think the sync light is illuminating though on the autopilot annunciation panel, but the sync feature with vertical speed is working. It's a really cool feature in the um, BA146. I'll discuss it later. Uh, I really like it. Um, engine number two. Hey boss, I'm trying to focus on work here. Could you stop calling me? I'm going to be calling it at least twice more. Ed 2 there's that 10%. Let's do 10%. There's a matey boy suggested. We still need to set the trim as well for the departure. I think the trim in this is just literally put it in the green band. There we are. TGT, N1, oil pressure. It's very nice. All the bells and whistles seem to be working.
uh, Liam C not opposed with the LNAV and FMC being a bit um, buggy. Yeah, the MD11, yeah. Wonderful. And lastly, engine number one. Head two. Head one. There's that tiny little oil pressure raise. That's 10%. Engine number one. So clean, the graphics are just absolutely amazing. Alright, uh, 3.5 I'm usually standard trim of the plane, I don't mean to backseat fly, just uh, giving tips as I fly this plane's sun. Oh, very good. Uh, I'll take it, I'll go for 3.5 units. As long as it's in the green zone. Anyway, we've got four good edge starts. Overhead panel, rotate the switch to off, engine start a master switch to off. Imagine if we've seen the pin, well, it wouldn't have been a bypass pin, but the chocks have been removed. Thumbs up from the ground crew, we can now do the before taxi flow. So, electrical panel, uh, generator one and two on. Uh, sorry, one and four on, you just have a seven three there. Uh, switch the APU air back on, uh, switch on both pack switches, uh, set the brake fans to auto. Air conditioning. Uh, brake fans are in the auto position. Switch on the engine two and three hydraulic pumps. There we are. They are on. Let's get rid of all the amber enunciations. Braking motor light is extinguished. On the ice protection panel, switch on all the heaters. There's my mouse cursor disappearing again. So screen heat, vanes of that Peter heat on as well. Uh, rotate the transponder knob to the TA position. Transponder to TA. Cancel that. Uh, flaps to 18. And look at these flap animations. They are absolutely mega. It is actually neat. <laughs> Absolutely wicked. Animations are so cool. Anyway, flap 18 set for departure. And we will now just do the flight control check. So, elevator, fall back, fall forward, left and right. Rudders left and right. Looking good. Uh, what have I got left here? Flight recorder off, brake fans on, parking brake is set. Now the flight recorder, I can't remember how to turn it on, but it did seem to turn on automatically uh, during takeoff or before or after takeoff this day. Um, so flaps are 18, trim is in the green position. Looking good. Uh, press the config button, so I need to release the parking brake for this. Config check. There we are, you see how it's all quiet. And uh, overhead panel. More stuff to do up here, S uh, continuous ignition on, switch on the AC pump to supplement hydraulic power in the event of a failure. So, a pump is on, and just taxi lights. Perfect, we are ready to go guys. Uh, RA flight recorder comes on with parking brake off. You're not backseat pilot, you're filling us with very useful information. Appreciate it, buddy. Uh, cams pilot, you can click the CG SMC value on the EFB to automatically set the correct pitch trim for takeoff. Thank you very much. Oh, it's just outside the green band. I don't like that. <laughs> Let me just do a config check. Okay, it's, it's in limits, just. <laughs> well, that's obviously set correctly for us. Cheers, um. Uh, Cam's pilot. Cam's pilot is on the dev team. I'm very grateful for his attendance this evening. Right, so again, just check one more time. No ATC. Took a little bit longer to get this aircraft set up today, but we can look in a bit more detail. And we'll uh, release the parking brake. And we'll 
all as you to come up to. Thanks. And East Traffic Air France 14 Alpha Foxtrot with taxi 1.04 left uh, via Tango and uh, Bravo, I think. <laughs> right, clear left, uh, clear right. Can I do a config check in the 146 like you do in the 73? I know you've got the config button, but if I advance the thrust levers, I don't want to do it all the way because we'll uh, activate TMS. There we are. We're moving. Take my next left here. So low to the ground here. This is onto Delta. Might be able to arm this now. So we can arm the altitude. Remember, we're flying an NATP 1, but I'll brief the departure in full. 50. Let me jump. 30, 20, 10. <laughs> Thanks, Av rate. Go AV rate for the two quid. Donating to see if work has paid me yet. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Looks like work's paid you. Thank you very much for your for your donation, sir. Uh, payday for a lot of people around the end of the month, isn't it? Superb. Thanks, buddy. Uh, he said, I have indeed been paid. Fantastic. Thank you. Hey, Lee Russell, hope you're doing well. I will now mute the alerts for departure. Cool. Now we're on the parallel taxiway, we'll complete the before takeoff checklist. I'll do my own operator's one because it'll just check that everything is configured as needed. So config is checked, flaps we have 18, uh, stab trim is set for departure automatically right on the edge of the limit there. Takeoff briefing. So the air conditioning system and takeoff on this aircraft are a little bit different. We leave the AP running. And on the after takeoff checklist, we'll turn on the engine. Well, they don't call it engine bleed, do they? They call it um, engine air. We'll turn on the engine air switches and turn off the APU. This is the, the tutorial guidance. I think you can do a sort of a normal bleeds on takeoff, but um, this is the one that we're following today. Uh, so we've got to be careful of that because we're taking off technically depressurized. And um, once we're airborne, we'll complete that as well. We're going to climb straight ahead to 500 feet. Once we're at 500 feet, we're going to make a right turn inbound to the Saint Tropez VOR, which is 37 miles away, following an NADP-1 departure. So I'm going to maintain about 138 knots here on the climb, uh, which is our V2, I think it's V2 plus 10, uh, until we get to 3,000 feet, and then we're going to accelerate to two. 20 knots inbound to San Tropez. We'll level off at 6,000 feet. I'll do the after takeoff checklist level at 6,000 to make sure the aircraft stays pressurized and then we'll continue our climb up to our cruise level. So that's it. So I'll imagine the cabin is secure. Check's complete. And we're just going to wait one second at the hold point just to make sure the aircraft is correctly configured at Alpha for 04 left. A bonjour. <laughs> Air France Express. There's uh, the aircraft just up to pilot as well. There we are at the whole point, so just set the parking brake. Oops, just rolled slightly forward there. So parking brake is set, so lineup actions. Landing lights can come on. Weather radar isn't modelled yet, so I'll imagine it is on though. I'll just put the range to something like 50 on. Tilt set to what we need it to be, and uh, we have takeoff selected on the TMS, which it is, and that's it. Takeoff E2 plus 20, race gear, maintain uh, target speed until you accelerate, and then we'll go from there. Guys, any questions at all? Any suggestions? Anything I've missed for the devs? Let's go to Faro. Parking brake is released. 
Uh, one thing I think I'd noticed yesterday is the stop go. When I press it to go, it doesn't start the elapsed timer, so we're going to make a note of our time. We are live time. Um, it'll be a lovely sunset approach into Faro. Uh, airborne time, well, 17.02. By the time we're airborne, the time will be 17.03, so we'll just have to work off that. Remember, as well, I don't fly this aircraft. I'll try not exceed MMO or VMO or anything. I'll hand fly as much as I possibly can as well. Excellent. So flight directors are on. They're just showing level flight on the heading here. Perfect. I'll slip the vertical speed up to take off. Right. Tokers in chat. Let's go to Faro timing. Just look nice and stabilise the sensible, set takeoff thrust. So hopefully the TMS will take over. Not. Might have missed something there. Right, well I've got about 93.7 set. Airspeed's alive. Oh, I'm not getting any call outs from the first officer. Usually he calls out stuff. <laughs> V1. Eight. I might have missed something there. And we're airborne. Positive climb, gears up. I'm just going to maintain this speed initially. I'm just going to turn the flight directors off because I'm not following at the moment. There's 500 feet, going to make that right turn towards Saint Tropez. Just going to maintain V2 plus 20. Climb thrust, about 90%. That's about 30 degrees. And trim. So we're going to maintain this speed of our V2 plus 20 until we're 3,000 feet AGL. Pitching up slightly again. And the first impression, when I'm handling it like this, not flying this aircraft, but it handles like it does an X-Plane 11, which is promising. Just increase the attitude, don't want to go above 20 degrees. So wings level, there's an NADP2, so we're above 3,000 feet. We can now lower the nose, we're going to accelerate to about 250 knots. We're inbound to the VO almost, let me just increase my bug speeds. Now, I've lost my virtual first officer, I've definitely forgot to do something, because on my test sectors, um, he said TMS set, uh, all that stuff as well, uh, and select flaps up as well. So, flaps up, for now, I'm just going to maintain about a thousand feet a minute. Bit of thrust off coming up to 250. Pitch nose up here as the lifts retract, uh, the flaps retract, and the lift decreases. Now we are looking at stable, so flight director's on, uh, autopilot engage, six hours of feet, going to use four lock. And vertical speed. I'm now going to use the sync mode. So I've got sync mode engaged and I'm lowering the nose to a thousand feet per minute. There's 250 knots, so I'm going to start producing the thrust. 250 knots. Inbound towards Saint Tropez. And we'll just level off at 6,000 feet and then we'll do the after takeoff check. This one strobes. Oh, yeah, I did forget to put those on. Maybe that's why I didn't get the virtual FO. Strobes on. There we are now intercepting the radial inbound, 250 knots, levelling off at 6,000 feet. And we're going to switch to sync mode now. There's a boat down there, which is pretty cool. Just watching our speed a little bit fast, doing about 260 knots. There's 6,000, just taking a bit of thrust off to maintain 250. Sync mode is engaged, inbound to the VOR. Gear is up. Now do the after takeoff checklist. So switch off 
the AC no, I don't want to put that leaf. AC pump. Mouse cursor come back. So AC pump is off. Uh, shut down the APU. So stop. And we need to turn on this boost. Oh, they have to take off checklist. Unless I've missed it. Turn on the engine air. AP bleed is off, packs are on. And I think that is pretty much it. Uh, just watching our speed again a little bit fast. I think that's just the APU shutting down. I think we're all good here. Check pressurization. So we've got a slight cabin rate to climb. Altitude, diff pressure is 2.0, so we're pressurizing. About a thousand feet there. There we are. I have to take off checklist, I think, is complete. So, 250 knots. We'll go up to our cruise level. Which is flight level 290 initially. That is set. I'll arm that. Just to bring the speed a little bit. I'm going a little bit naughty above 250. I know about two, 255 knots. You can let me off. So the, all I want to do is bring the speed back to 250. And then we're going to use indicated airspeed hold and we'll set climb for us. So 6,000 feet. That's, yeah, see? It is slippy. Take a lot of thrust here. I don't expect it to be as slippy as that. Right, as soon as that's in the middle there, we're doing 250. So there's 250. Indicated airspeed hold. Set climb thrust. Ninety percent. Up we go. Don't turn off the AP. Five will shut down. <laughs> there we go. And look at the climb rate. So this has been mentioned to me by the dev, um, the dev team, I spoke to Martin today, so at lower altitude at the moment, they are working to fix this, this is more a, a Microsoft Flight Simulator drag issue, look at this, we're doing 5,000 feet per minute, this is not a little bit excessive for the, um, the 146, just turn the sound down here slightly, there we are, um, so I did ask the dev, look, performance seems very positive, um, very, you know, unlike what I'd expect this aircraft to be, and he did say, yeah, the drag modelling in Microsoft Flight Simulator is not great for jet aircraft at the moment. They are working on an update, so they are, but at the moment they're having to make, uh, you know, some slight changes to make sure it, it reacts behave, or behaves correctly in all phases of flight here. So yeah, we're doing 250 knots, I've got 90%, well, it's a little bit less climb for us actually. Don't forget, we are the 100, and we are lighter than usual, so the, the performance you know, it is it is better than it would be for the 300 fully loaded. Now I've actually set a bit more of a sensible climb for us. Look, it's doing 2,000 feet per minute, but I think it's still a little excessive. But um, that is something they are actively uh, working on there. Thanks, Cam's pilot. 88% M1. I've literally just set it. <laughs> Not 90%. I think I wrote down in my notes from the X-Plane 11 version, 90% from, from your tutorial or something. But there we are. There's 87.3. You can see TMS is sinking as much as it can there. So there's 88, fine tuning it, and that is giving us two and a half thousand feet. We're going to maintain 250 knots uh, and then we'll do 6.8 in the cruise. We'll set it standard as well. Oh yeah, because it's Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's going to be above 18,000 feet for the B button to work, so we can do it manually. But yeah, that's giving us 2,000 feet per minute now, which is a little bit better. So I did have a little bit too much thrust, so it's not too far off. Uh, but still a little bit... Um, more than I'd expect this aircraft. Anyway, best to do the pre-cruise checks. We are just better check our navigation as well. Look, we're only 9.3 miles from Saint-Tropez. Um, so if I bring up Navigraph for you, we'll tune up our next VOR on box two first. So from Saint-Tropez, I'm going to route direct to Spain, the Bagger VOR, which is 12.2. So put that on box two, 12.2. Probably a little bit too far out to get the ident at this stage. So 12.2. Nothing on the HSI, that's not a problem. I'll just look at the operational flight plan and check what outbound radio we need to fly from Saint-Tropez uh, to the Begar VOR. So let me just grab my operational flight plan. Here it is. Uh, so, we are routing from Saint-Tropez. Uh, track outbound from that is 242. Look, that's the track we need to fly. So what I'm going to do is just go to heading mode. over the cone of confusion very shortly. I'm going to go heading select. 
to set the outbound course, which is 242. And we're about 12,000 feet, so there we are. There's kind of confusion. 4.2, oh, actually not quite there yet. So when it says about two miles, we're, we're going to be out pretty much overhead the, um, the VOR. So we'll get ready to make a little turn onto it. There we go, guys. Oh, sorry. Still at the flight plan up there. Oh yeah, check out target. You're quite right. Oh, there we go. So 2.8, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 
which lights are they? Is it the central position for off? Ah. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I forgot if I was paid. Hold up. But there's a tw the second time you did that, Amy Ray. Thanks for the two quid, buddy. You definitely be paid. <laughs> Thanks, man. Don't, don't need to waste your your pay on me. Thank you very much. Excellent. The rotary up here. It's like a little uh, hexagon shaped up there. So very cool. Um. Excellent. Well, well on our way. Outbound for the Saint Tropez VOR. We're going to wait uh, for TME two. Uh, here to come alive. Um, we already have the next VOR, which is the Bagar, uh, Bagur, sorry, VOR on the east coast of Spain, flying over the Mediterranean for the next uh, 30 minutes. Very nice. Uh, Juan, will you fly the Fokker F28 when they release it? Yes, I've already asked them. You know, if that aircraft once it gets a little closer to release, if you'd like me to try it out, I'd love to. We've not flown a, a Fokker before. That is an old aircraft as well. Lighting here slightly. There we go. I cannot remember for the life of me how to turn up the lighting for the MCP. Welcome. Lighting. Lighting is in Microsoft Flight Simulator is superb. Looking good. Still maintaining 250 knots. When we level off, we'll leave the climb thrust set. Just a little bit off there. Right? There's no water from on this aircraft. Still managing a thousand feet per minute, though. You know, it's a little excessive for the 146, I believe. But as discussed, as you'll see when I level off, uh, drag uh, high speed isn't that great in, in most of flight simulation at the moment. I'll discuss why when I level off and talk a little bit about parasitic drag and how it changes with increased speed. Uh, Juan, does it have an FMS? I have no clue. Uh, so it's all ready to go. It's not modelled yet. If you so wish to navigate using LNAV though, if you have a look here, well I shall demonstrate it for you. Look how accurate VOR navigation is though. That's not good. If you were to navigate using this, you can do by switching, let's just go to heading select here, uh, for a brief second to match the heading. Heading select, and then you switch this to RNAV. This is now showing this GPS routing, and then you can go LNAV, and it will follow the Microsoft Flight Simulator programmed routing, as long as you programmed it in, which is quite a nice feature, I quite like that. If you perhaps had to go away for an hour, you got no order from it, would be a bit brave. But um, uh, yeah, if, if you want to relax a little bit in regards to navigation, you can turn it on. But we're not uh, using that today. Uh, we are going back to nav, and we're going old school, we're using conventional navigation the entire sector. Nice big fat contrail. Live is just not playing ball today. It, see, it is tracking my flight. It is tracking my fi flight uh, information. It's just not displaying on the overlay for some reason. Very strange. What to go? Uh, Pete White, you uh, picked a great evening to go flying. The sky's gorgeous. Yes, we following the sunset all the way to far. Uh, that made you feel a bit sick. Welcome. Uh, yeah. What is what is IT? Flight time's two hours fifteen. We've been airborne now for twenty minutes, so it should be there in two hours. 
Sunset Faro is at 19.13. Oh, we'll be landing. Um, so Sunset, sorry, is 18.47. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be dark by the time we get to Faro. There we are, level at 2.90. We're going to let the aircraft accelerate now to decimal 6.8. So as soon as that yellow or orange circle's in the middle, we start reducing thrust. No auto throttle here, so we've just got to find a thrust setting which is going to hold decimal 6.8 for us. That looks about right. We're just going to keep an eye on that speed, just see what happens. It starts increasing or decreasing, we'll make the changes to the thrust to maintain that speed. A little bit too much thrust takes, it's slowly creeping up, so just do a little bit more thrust off. I've got my calculator out for speed distance time calculations as well, because I have no way of working out time. Um, so, distance speed time, for time you need to take your distance, which is 61 miles, divide that by our ground speed, 395 times that by 60, so we've got nine, just over nine minutes until we get to that VOR based on current ground speed. I think we've got our thrust setting about right there, looking good. That counts part of the real F28 on which our product is based has no FMS GPS, it's all VOR and DB navigation, however we will consider a retrofit FMS. Very cool. I mean, yeah, flying on VATSIM these days, can be a bit more difficult with regards to um, FMS navigation, you know, not having it very limited, certain airports only have uh, RNAV, like Nice we just departed there, it's all RNAV based it's smidgen more thrust off here. The, one of the things with Microsoft Flight Simulator at the moment with, with commercial jet airliners, um, you see I've got a thrust setting here about 80% N1 and it's sort of still accelerating slowly. Now when it comes to drag, there's two types of drag, you've got induced and parasitic drag, people call it skin friction, form, pressure drag, and all these different forms here, and as you accelerate or get faster, profile drag or, or um, parasitic drag is just the physical you know, the aircraft is moving through the aircraft, it's hitting the air molecules and that increases directly um, with speed and you can see, look, with an aircraft with no auto throttle, same with the 737 NG if the auto throttle is inoperative, once we get the cruise we set a thrust setting and usually what happens is the aircraft will accelerate and, and as you get higher speed, to a higher speed, that drag equals the amount of thrust that's being produced from the engine, so the air the speed stays pretty stable. With Microsoft Flight Simulator at the moment, there's insufficient or not enough um, parasitic drag modelled in the aircraft, so so you'll see if I leave this order, for, I think I've actually found a nice thrust setting now, but usually what happens is if I was just to increase it by 1% N1 on all engines, the aircraft would accelerate, but the, it would soon reach the point at which thrust equal the amount of drag parasitic drag and the thrust would stop increasing. What you'll find in Microsoft Flight Simulator is if I was to add that, the thrust, the aircraft just keeps accelerating. There's not enough parasitic um, drag modelled in Microsoft Flight Simulator at the moment. Um, resultingly, the thrust settings we have here, I believe, are lower um, than, than what would be required. We're going to do some fuel checks, remember we took standard fuel today. Um, be nice to, to compare it here. But, um, Microsoft Flight Simulator are, are working on improving um, parasitic drag modelling. Because at the moment it, it's not quite enough and that is having a little bit of an effect here. Because I noticed, I compared this to another stream in the 146 and I had much higher N1s. The TGT was a, a little bit higher as well. But talking to Martin, uh, one of the devs, he was quoting some performance figures. He said they are a little bit low in the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, 146 at the moment, but they will be fixed in the near future. Uh, and due to all this, that uh, drag modelling and all 
these other factors and the fact that the engines are a little overpowered at the moment. The performance at lower altitude is quite excessive, um, which you saw there. I, I was climbing at a four or five thousand feet per minute. Yes, I had a little bit too much thrust set, about two or three percent extra in one, but it was a little excessive. But these are all things that devs have recognised. I just sent a brief email just with some feedback what I expected, and they came back with a very detailed um, analysis of my feedback and, and what they're working on to re rectify that. And, uh, and it's great to see, like, just like, uh, I mean, I'm not part of any formal beta test program. I, they just got it, gave me early access. Uh, but they answered all my questions with, with great detail. Uh, it was great to see. Um, but it, yeah, we sat here, 29,000 feet. I think got a little bit more excessive thrust than we'd need, but um, the actual attitude picture looks, looks pretty spot on. Uh, hello, Nimlov. How can I download? Is this free? No, it won't be free <laughs> for the guys at the bottom there. It will be a payware aircraft. Um, what it'll be priced at is uh, not known at the moment. Um, the x 11 version I think $60 or so. Uh, but it is a, a payware aircraft and it will be available, I believe, in April, someone said. Uh, Simon, I love the solution that PMDG did with the DC-6. It is, of course, meant to be flown conventionally, but you still can fly it with the GNS-530 if you really want. Yes, I quite like that as well, Simon. And if you look at any of those classic birds flying today, DC-6s, DC-3s, they're all using handheld GPS devices. It'd be foolish not to. You've got the technology here available in reality, and it increases situation awareness, and, you know, reduces the risk of terrain flying below the MSA. So it is worthwhile and using tools like that. Um, if you want to use that in the sim, it's fine. I like the, the fact that we can still group like we did before we had GPSs. Um, Wing42 Otmar has sent me a copy of his Boeing 247, which I plan to either stream on Sunday morning or some point on Monday. It looks absolutely incredible, this aircraft. Really looking forward to installing it and giving it a, a go. Uh, I spoke to Otmar. And one of the things that Otmar has included is um, oh, what was it called? I'm trying to, to remember. It's modelling of a, a, a form of radio navigation. It's called radio range navigation. So basically, I think it's a plugin you have to install, or if it comes to the aircraft, I'm not so sure. You can download it for Microsoft Flight Simulator. But essentially, you fly on an airway and you listen to Morse code, and if you hear more tone, it means you're too far left, and you have another tone, you're, more, you're too far right. And this is a model, so I'm going to learn how to fly test this rain, radio range navigation which you can do in the Boeing 247. Something we never covered in the ATPL syllabus at all. I'd heard of it, but when he asked, oh, we can, have you ever tried radio range navigation? I was like, uh, no. <laughs> so he has a manual which includes all of that, which is really, really cool. Drone can action. of the bed anyway. Look at that. G eat. Beautiful. Hi Krimo, hi Captain, have you heard of the Phoenix A320? And if so, will you be trying it on release? I have heard of the Phoenix A320. I think this is a very Equally anticipated Airbus A320 coming out uh, for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I've seen screenshots and pictures. Um, we do do Airbus occasionally here. It's uh, fraught with risks and errors and danger on my part, but uh, yeah, for sure, we'll take it for a spin. Probably want to step stake with 320 Sim Pilot and V1 simulations in regards to that. I think that'll be uh, great resourceful information in regards to how to, to fly those aircraft. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, ten. Thanks. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yes, cheers, Robbie. You know the other voice is active. It is. We are still flying outbound at the moment from Saint Tropez, which is. Let's have a little look here. It's the beauty of having a seven three. It's actually doing a good job. Look, we're only a little bit off our track, but now, yes, as we are much closer to Bagger, we can tune that VOR. Thank you very much, uh, Robbie Pierce, for £10 for, <laughs> for being a, uh, an active first officer monitoring the performance of flight of the aircraft. 
That was brilliant. Uh, heading select then, and we'll just switch this here. And then when we fly over this VOR, we're going to try what Cam's pilot suggested. So we do 12-2. Remember, before using it as a source of navigation, you're meant to get the ident. I don't know if that's modeled yet, so if I go down here to nav... See if we can hear any Morse code. I have no idea if this is modeled or not. There we are, flying inbound to Bagger, 12-2, on box 1 and 2. Next VOR after Bagger is going to be the Myala uh, VOR, 1121, so we can put that on standby. We'll do a fuel check as well at uh, Myella. We'll soon be directly overhead Barcelona. When the sun's in this sort of position, it does, you do get produced sort of detail of how you can see what you can see there. But there is Spain, absolutely stunning. Just better check our speed as well. Yeah, you see, look how our speed's dropped off a little bit there. It's if I set a thrust setting here. So you watch this. The aircraft's gonna start accelerating, but it doesn't really have any effects on parasitic drag. The acceleration is quite uniform. It's like there's no excess drag as we go fast. And if I was to leave this here, we'll probably exceed it, I don't know. Uh Cam's pilot, one current Microsoft flight sim bug that impacts VR navigation is the work very low volume of nav audio idents. Sober working on that. Okay, so it's probably sounding, but if you are suggesting that, we're never going to hear that over the drone of the air. aircraft. I can't hear anything anyway in my headphones. Do we get a staple of you, though? No, it doesn't work, Jamlin, really. We've Staple of you. I mean, if I was to do that one, no, because you have to use the mouse. No flybys either. I miss having flybys in X Plane. The camera system in X Plane 11 is far superior. Far superior. Hello, the photo, Jones. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday, I read. No, it's not my birthday. Happy Friday. <laughs> Happy birthday! I caught the end of your Zebo stream the other day. Uh, what's new with the updates? We've been flying the latest version, public version of the Zebo model, the last few streams. Um, uh, I need to catch up with Zebo. It hasn't pushed out any updates recently. Um, but um, yeah, it, it was just bug fixing primarily. Flap extension speeds were revised. Uh, there was something else as well. Uh, it should be all on the uh, Explain forums. But no, the, the current version is very stable, handling nicely. No major bugs. And you get replay. Well, you can in Microsoft Flight Simulator, Liam. I know there's a third party add on, and also if you're in dev mode, you can record your landings, but I haven't got around to really playing with it. So you can see, look, I've had this same thrust setting now, and look, it's just accelerating. It's like. Drag increases, you know, at square of speed, and it's just not happening. It's just there's no drag, and, and this is not a one four six issue. This is a Microsoft Flight Simulator issue. I'll be really interested to see how PMDG are dealing with that in the um, in the A seven three seven. I've just gone back to eighty percent. Do miss auto throttle? <laughs> That's for sure. And our fuel flow, I mean, we're changing it constantly, but it's a little less than I'd expect as well. Might have to wait a little bit of thrust in a second anyway, just once we get back to our speed. But right now we're burning 1,600 kilos an hour, which I think is a little less than what I'd expect. Probably go up to about 1,800, 1,900 by the time we're back to 7,6, but a little bit of thrust. I think it's a little more expecting, usually about 2, 2, or 2 tons. Uh, no, it's no, don't, don't do that. It's not my, my, my birthday's next month. <laughs> Uh, Divic, Captain, going to check out the Cessna 414 release today as well for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Really, really good. I uh, missed that one. I'll, uh, I'll take a gander. Well, we'll do a step climb up to 310 later as well. Anyway, 
here comes Barcelona. Barcelona will be here. And this has all been updated with SimWorld Update 8. But that looks amazing. Uh, Papa Charlie, hi there, does the EFB have chart support? Not at this stage. They, I believe, are implementing it. Let me just read the email I got from the devs. So some of the features which are not in the current beta build but will come upon release is that the EFB tablet will have full Navigraph and Simbrief and moving map implementation. Pretty cool if they've got Simbrief in there somehow. And then you can, because the Avitab, I love in x the ability to open PDF charts, so if they can get this in the flight plan in there, that is awesome. Um, FMS, um, including the option of no FMS, obviously it's just the, the 3D model there at the moment. That's coming. You can have animated jump seat, animated sun visors, animated cup holders, animated fly deck door, which is a model at the moment, it's just a static door. Um, they're having to confirm with Microsoft Flight Simulator in regards to using the weather radar because the weather in Microsoft Flight Simulator is better. Live weather is much better, but the way weather is interpreted on the weather radar isn't accurate at the moment. And, and obviously at the moment the beta build is only the one variant. The 100, so they're going to add the 200, the 300, the QT, the QC, and the RAF uh, VIP version. Then I can use the AF call sign. <laughs> so, yeah, lots more features which are not in this version coming will be there with uh, release. Right then, so. Cam's pilot said, overhead the VOR, which we're approaching here, 6.7 miles. If we leave it in Vorlock, it should just fly straight outbound. Now, it's a slight track change at the moment. What's that track we're flying? 241. Just quite like that here. Uh, 241. We're going from 241 to 249. So I do need to change the track once we're outbound. So as soon as we get in the cone of confusion, I'm going to set the course to 249 and uh, see what happens. Because the NG would go heading to that. Right, there's the cone of confusion. 249. So we're directly overhead the VOR now. Let's see if it'll make a right turn to fly outbound. We're still in Vorlock. It's showing fly right. Come on, right turn. I don't think it's happy. Maybe I need to wait a little bit longer. Okay. Might need some tweaking. I'll wait until about 10 miles out. I don't think that's worked. We're still in uh, Vorlock hold. Oh, 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 oh. I might have been wrong. Ding dong. Look at that! That's awesome! Nice. Superb! So that's quite cool. So what happened there, Cam's pilot suggested, it, I don't know so I don't know if this is a thing unique to the 146. I'm really curious to do it in the NG and see what happened. Uh, what would happen, but uh, the, the supplementary procedure, which I will double check now, never flown VOR to VOR in real life, um, is approaching the beacon, go to heading select, fly over the beacon, and then when you pick up the radio the other side, then go with Vorlock. So what we did there, we just basically stayed in Vorlock, flew over the beacon, code of confusion, it flew wings level and looks of it, and as soon as we got on the outbound sector, we updated the radial, and then it locked onto the radial and made that right turn. So that's, that's wicked. I'm going to have to double check the sub procedure uh, on the NG. Uh, VOR navigation, don't do it. It's all I have now. But we have sub supplementary procedure guidance on, on how to navigate uh, VOR to VOR. That's wicked. Oh, best to quick do a time and fuel check, actually. So we are pretty much overhead the Bagar, Bagur VOR. Uh, we were airborne at 0 3, it's now 41. So we've been airborne for 38 minutes, so at Bagger, 36, 38, so yeah, not bad, pretty much on time. We should have burnt 2,400 kilos of fuel, let's have a look at the fuel used. So yeah, you can see here, 6, 12, 1,200, this is half 
of what this is saying, which is why I didn't take extra fuel today. And this fly 50, plan, 40, this fly plan 30, is the same one I did use with the Honda 100, 10. which is quite close. This is saying I should have burned 2,400, but actually burned half that, 1,200. A big shout out to Mrs. N2 for putting up with me for the last 22 years of marriage. <laughs> Here's to many more. Thank you very much, N2, for the five pounds. Really appreciate it, buddy. Mrs. N2, congratulations on staying put with N2 for 22 years. I don't know how you did it. <laughs> thank you very much. I guess you are both watching, perhaps. But uh, thank you very much, N2, for your support as a member. And thank you, Mrs. N2, for letting N2 play flight sim and uh, hang out with us guys in the uh, Discord from time to time. Cheers, buddy. So, yeah, um, fuel burn a little less. This is, again, something... Uh, I spoke to just like about, and they discussed how, yeah, this is a combination of we need to still make some fine adjustments, which is why I must stress what you see here is the aircraft in beta. It's nowhere near or won't be the final release product, so there are bugs, there are things that need to be addressed still. Um, and one of the things that he did say, are, so I'm just quoting some of the stuff that I, I, cause I queried this with just flight. Um, so the cruise TGTs are a bit low at the moment. And that will be adjusted shortly. Um, at the moment, due to Microsoft Flight Simulator limitations, a bit of a balancing act to achieve uh, performance at lower levels. And fuel burn, not too far off the cruise, currently a little bit low in the climb. We're working on that as well. Well, for, I mean, the Simbri flight plan might not be the most accurate. It could need adjusting, but, but that's saying we should have burned half of what we actually have burned. Right now, we are, yeah, we're pretty nicely at 6870. And we're burning eight sixteen hundred kilos per hour. We are the one hundred. We are a bit lighter. I think it could be a little bit more fuel burn per hour. Spoozy clips. Don't use the Avro profile. Use the one four six one, or it'll be inaccurate. I was told the other way around. Spoozy clips. I was told don't use the one four six profile. Use the Avro profile because that's the most accurate. That I was. I don't know. I'm just. Uh, that's what I was told. Hi Matt Warren. Hope your flight is going fantastic. Are you going to try a Concorde when it's released next week for Microsoft Flight Simulator? I know it's not study level, but it's looking pretty cool. I should be able to test that for you. Um, so this Concorde by DC Simulations, it is not the Concorde you get from like FS Labs where all the bells and whistles and modeling it is basic um, but yeah it could be a bit of fun so I think we'll try it out I think it'd be a bit of fun I mean it's Concord in Microsoft Flight Simulator so um, yeah I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll uh, consider it I have been offered access I've sort of said yeah I'll have a look at it, it it's not obviously you know we on this channel like to try fly high detailed aircraft but from time to time it can be a bit of fun and something else we'll see. I mean I've flown a, a solar powered plane on a live stream before and that was great fun and the Brario 11 but the Wing 42 is, is my next fun aircraft I've learned to fly. Jerry Pilot 1, uh, good afternoon, how's the plane so far? Honest opinion is I really like it. Um, we talked about some of the limitations in Microsoft Flight Simulator, how it's affecting performance but in this beta build it's handling I flew the departure, hand flew it off, hand fly most of the approach, or try and hand fly at least the final part of the approach today. It feels great. Um, and all the bells and whistles that you got with the version X plane, which I really enjoy flying, it all seems to be working in Microsoft Flight Simulator and seems to be simulated, which is great. And obviously, it looks incredible. The textures are really sharp, very clean. Um, big improvement on the X plane 11 version. And the exterior model is one of the best I've ever seen. Oh, no, that's rudder, apparently. <laughs> Let me just double check. Why is Yucky Cab not on there? Just make sure everything's okay. I want to pilot in. I just jammed in a load of right rudder. <laughs> Let me go back to Yucky Cab. There we are. I think the elevator on this is a, is it a servo tab, they call it. So when you actually move the flight controls, it doesn't move the elevator, it moves this, which then moves the elevator is free to pivot. <laughs> yeah, beautiful exterior. Yeah, 
Yeah, you guys are going to have fun doing nice commuter hops in this aircraft. And one of the things... That's what I'd like to hear. Alpaca Airways will be uh, getting a new fleet of uh, 146s then. You had a lot of left rudder in there. I did accidentally. Oh, yeah. Don Bonsanto, do a barrel roll. You can tell it's a, a Friday. Every single Friday. Do a barrel roll! Do a barrel roll! Do a barrel roll! Every time. Caspar, it's currently too low after being too high in an earlier beta. Is that fuel flow? Ah, uh, yeah. So you see, the guys look uh, just like are actively developing this aircraft. So I'm guessing that it's referring to fuel flow there. So obviously, in an earlier build, it was too high, now it's too low. It's going to take lots of constant adjustments, but rest assured, the version you'll get on release will be spot on, like the one in X-Plane. That's an amazing aircraft there, you will pulling out as well. The Hawk? That was really good fun. Matt, I well, forget to tell you that I recently got that dodgy peanut butter you showed us on stream. Dog loves it. Yeah, the, the the friendly peanut butter for the dogs. Good stuff, that. I need to remember how to get... Uh, Drone can. There we are. Ooh, uh, might go up to 31,000 feet just to get out of this cloud here. Have I got some sort of rudder trim in? Or is that just making an adjustment on the VOR? About five degrees of roll here. Ooh. I haven't reset the rudder. Ah. That's inefficient. Let me just. Oh, wow. The rudder seems to be jamming. <laughs> controller. How do I neutralise the rudder? Is it five? Oh my god, I've got like rudder in still. Oh! <laughs> What's the keyboard command for neutralising the rudder input? So I've basically got constant rudder in Oh my god. Which is why it's rolling. The autopilot is compensating for the yaw. That's how you can tell when you've got the autopilot engaged. You see the aileron telling you need left rudder. That is extremely inefficient because you are flying with the rudder out and the ailerons, uh, which is increasing drag. So, oh my god, I've got so much rudder in. How do I, how do I neutralise the rudder? I've done something with the controller. I can't neutralise the boxy thing. <laughs> the autopilot, I don't know about the 146, but shouldn't have any input on the rudder. I know there's a keyboard command to neutralise the rudder, but the, it seems <laughs> that's not right. Hmm. <laughs> Martin, you uh, so you've been flying like this and only been half the fuel expected. Yep. Now how do I neutralise well. it? It's basic. Right, let me just disconnect everything. Okay, yeah, so that has allowed me to neutralise the rudder now. So maybe... Uh, I need to double check that. Maybe... Maybe the BAE 146 autopilot does have input on the rudder. On the 737, fell uh, passive. The, the autopilot has no input on the rudder whatsoever. Oh my god, look at my airspeed. Gotta pay attention, look at that. 
can see how the dra I don't know. It's just being slowly creeping back and back and back. So yeah, um, Microsoft Flight Simulator, if the autopilot in, if you put rudder on the controller, it seems to leave leave it in. There seems to be a little bit of right rudder in still now. But it's not yeah, interesting. Good job we know to speed. Anyway, outbound from Bagger VOR. We're about halfway now to the next VOR, which is Mailer, 12-1. That's in range, 62 miles to go. So we're just accelerating back to decimal 7. It's been slowly creeping back the whole time. Switch the VOR over. There we go. Run trim not centered. Uh, looks pretty centered to me. Whoa! Okay, so the only inputs are massive. Oh no, I ah, okay. So it's. So the actual rudder positions that one there. Uh, Robbie Pierce, thank you very much for buying an official fly deck sim bug, sir. I cannot read the comment, but thank you. Oh, where are we going? Where are we going, Vorlock? Oh. You stupid boy, I pressed back course, you stupid, stupid boy. That's my fault, I pressed back course, so it's trying to go on the reciprocal. I'm right, back to heading select. You donut. <laughs> <laughs> very much, any areas you've seen today are very much on my behalf. Now are we descending though? Descending without hold on. Right, let's. We know what you need to do in these situations. Let's get rid of the automation. Minimums, minimums, minimums. Yeah, I think we've got rudder in and everything. So this is. How do I shut that up? Thank you. Uh, so let's just hand fly. Let's get back to where we want to be. Correct speed, correct height on localizer because the rudder is still inputting rudder for some reason. There's our speed, so back to our target thrust, which is about 85% of it. Oh, whoops, which I'm to send there. Just trying to look through the flight directors and finding the line as I want. Right, let's just get everything all hunky dory again here. So heading to that right, I've neutralised the rudder. There's no rudder input at all here. Just a little bit high. I'll have a look at. Uh, that uh, membership comment in a second. I just want to get nice and hunky dory. Okay, so out arm, out holds on heading, autopilot. Look, as soon as I put the autopilot in, it's jamming in some rudder, I think. Or not. Why? It's a very aggressive jerk there. Right. And now back to Vorlock, not back. Okay, I think we're back in business, guys. So if the aeroplane starts misbehaving, it's not doing what you want it to do, disconnect the automation. If it's clearly not doing what it's supposed to, you're a pilot, fly the aeroplane. Reset your attitude, climb to your target altitude, heading, speed, and then re-engage the automation. That's better. 29,000 feet, left turn inbound to the beacon. We fixed it. But yeah, there was something to do with Microsoft Flight Simulator's rudder controls. Basically, if you you can see, look, it's put a little bit more rudder back in. It's like it's got a little bit of co it's constant right rudder, and it's ever since I pushed it on the controller. I know there's a shortcut in Microsoft Flight Simulator to neutralise the controls, but I don't know what button it is. So basically, I've got constant rudder input here. See the rudder input because I've got constantly in the input. This is my five on the numpad. 
seem to be doing anything with Numlock off or on. Yeah, we definitely got left rudder here. Let me just... You can see it. Let me just try the control rocket. Oh. <laughs> right, I just... Now it's putting too much left rudder in. Oh, it's just... Might have to jump in here. Used to be five on the number pad. I remember that. Let me just have a look on Google. Microsoft Flight Simulator reset flight controls. Because basically, it, it, when you push the button, it's like it's putting a constant rudder input there. Reset control surfaces. That's what I want. That's no. Yeah, because we've got this constant rudder input now. Uh, it, it just go there, but it's just going to have a nightmare, it's going to have a lot more drag than we, we uh, want. Uh, reset control yoke position when keys released. Yeah, it's all same, 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 numpad 5 again. I think that's FS6 then. Okay, so basically, if I make one click on my thing, it's just, it basically, it's like moves the rudder in blocks. But it doesn't seem to move the pedals. Okay, maybe I've just managed to somehow neutralize that using the controller. Okay, I think I might have done it. Even though the feet <laughs> look, don't look right. But it looks central. Yeah, I'm pretty happy that's neutralised now. Right, key thing is do not press the, the Xbox controller triggers, otherwise that will put rudder in there. Auto rudder, I don't want that. It says num 5, okay. So what I'm going to do one more time is just disconnect that one, one more time. Yeah, it's still got rudder in, because look, when I disconnect it, and look how it's rolling. See how it's rolling left? I'm just going to neutralise the controls. If it's rolling to the left, that means there's a, there's a left rudder input. So now, I'll just press number pad 5. Got it. Gotcha, you. So you basically disconnect the autopilot, push number 5 to neutralise the flight controls. Now we can re-engage the automation. Autopilot. This Xbox controller stuff. Uh, altitude. Yay! Go down as well. That's better. Look at that. We got there. So basically, you have to disconnect the automation. Do not push the triggers. Right, let's reassess the situation. Aviate, navigate, communicate. We're approaching the Malia VOR, uh, 14 miles away. We could do the same again. So there's no airways at this point. So let me grab up the operational flight plan. So from Malia, our uh, track's going to be 249 to 250. So what we can do, we can actually preset 250 now. So it not make any difference. And that means as soon as we fly over the VOR, we can actually leave it in for lock. And it should intercept us the, um, from 070 to 250. Yeah, so number five works to... I would unmap those triggers on the controller, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do that after the stream, Romulus. Oh, uh, look at Romulus, I saw your comment straight away because I was looking at chat. How are you doing well, buddy? Um, yeah, um, I think I will need to unwrap it. Now the autopilot is doing a great job of maintaining 29,100 things. So let's just go out arm. Um, so my flying instructor is saying, when, oh, fly out to sim, you do a great job of maintaining level flight. It's just <laughs> this correct level, like 29,050 feet. Or something. Right, I've just got the vertical speed. Let me just sync modes. I'm holding down sync, pitching the nose down slightly. I just want to get down to 29,000. In the cone of confusion, you'll see the distance now is pretty much stagnant 4.8, 4.9, 4.7, 4.6, 4.7, 4.8, 4.9, 4.7, 4.8, 4.9, 4.8, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.9, 4.
0.6, code of confusion, flying right over the VOR, because it's the same outbound, we're not on any airways here, we are actually joining an airway now, look from Ramon, up at November 975, just give it a few seconds and it will re-intercept it. Just give it a bit of time, we'll just monitor that and make sure it carries on flying outbound. Uh, Johannes Dixon, there is rudder trim. When I start to sim, the vertical rudder is 45 degrees to the right. So, yeah, I checked your Xbox controller. That's nothing to do with rudder trim. There it is, look, going out on the radio now. The rudder trim was neutral the whole time. The problem was, with Microsoft Flight Simulator and the Xbox controller, the, the flight controls don't return to neutral. So when I push the trigger on my controller, it sort of increased the rudder input and left it in as if I was keeping my foot on the rudder. The only way I was able to neutralise that was to disconnect all the automation, then push the num5 button on the keyboard, which re neutralizes all flight controls. Hi, right, Tim Fraser. Nice to see you, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Nice to see you popping in again. So, yeah, that was a issue with the Microsoft Flight Sim, really, with those controls. Anyway, we had Malia. Decimal 7-0. Only problem is at sunset, you can't see so much outside, but that is common as to real life. There we are, geographically. Halfway through the sector, about an hour left to go. It's a beautiful sunset approach. So we're all good now. Next VOR I'll tune, which is the Castahon VOR, 15.6 will be on standby. I was already in range, look, so we can actually technically switch over now. So, what I'll do is activate this 15.6 and re engage Warlock. There we are, already flying inbound to the VOR. A bit of distance speed time calculations again. So, distance is 115 miles, uh, speed over the ground 420 knots. And we'll times that by 60. So, 16 minutes will be overhead at uh, the cast on the VOR. And then we'll start um, planning our set to firing. Uh, Mage, may I ask why you're flying with an Xbox controller today? So I'm not, <laughs> Mage, I'm not flying with an Xbox controller. Not at all. I use the Xbox controller for this drone cam, so you can zoom around and stuff. However, if you're in this view, and if I was to make any inputs on the control comp, they act as flight controls, which I must disable. Um, so yeah, I'm not flying with an Xbox controller, I'm using the uh, ever size 6 day. Um, it's just as a, I accidentally thought I was in drone camera, I wasn't. Lorenzo, great plane, will it be on Xbox? Probably not, I am not so sure. Um, that's one to ask the just flight dev team. I know uh, Cam Spider's been in and out today, I might be able to answer that. Uh, Dave, hope you're doing well, great stream as always. How's the 146 Microsoft Flight Series so far? Didn't watch the whole stream, unfortunately. Yeah, I like it, uh, Dave. Um, they've really translated the product well from x 11, and the issues I have been having have all been recognised by the, de the dev team. Remember, this is, I must stress, a work in progress aircraft. It is not representative of the final products. Um, for example, the fuel burn we've seen is quite low, uh, we're, we're burning a lot less fuel than we'd expect it, but Cam's pilot uh, uh, said that on earlier builds it was too high, so they're just still fine-tuning things, adjusting it. Um, it handles really nicely in the sim. Yeah, we, we've had no problems. Any problems we've had have been induced by myself, so... <laughs> um, yeah, looking forward to... Well, you, you, well, I'm very fortunate to have it here, but uh, you guys should look very much forward to using the Microsoft Flight Sim. And why I, I like this sim so much, as well as discussing with some of the guys on Discord, yeah, I love x and all the scenery and all the ortho, and it does look great, but I just fired up the sim and installed the aircraft and flew it. And it, it's a bit strange, I feel like, do I need to do more? What have I missed? What scenery do I need to install? But with these sim world updates, there's a, a plethora of amazing high quality airports available sitting on the most accurate rendition of our planets on any program. Um, it's great. Graphics, the sky, the colours, all look super. I mean, look, just look at the um, sun coming through there. 
Even in the cloud, it looks great. Anyway, I think we're just going to do a step climb to 310. This thrust setting I mean to make a note of as well. It's holding on speed nicely. A bit faster than I'd like, but it's about 82% uh, N1. We'll climb up to uh, if anyone found the feet, which is on our flight plan. Just check there's no ATC here. Actually, there are several centres online. Madrid Airport. They're all approach centres. Oh, no, there is actually a centre coming up. I might get some ATC in a bit. Oh, we're literally about to get ATC. Oh no, apparently sensors online. No, oh, I haven't had any messages to say contact me or anything like that on, uh, on that sim. So we're currently in Barcelona Centre. We're now going to Madrid Centre. I'm definitely online, yeah, connected. Uh, Stefan, how do you get the Xbox controller to connect to PC? Is it like a Bluetooth type connection? You can use that. I actually have it connected. No, um, not Bluetooth. Um, so the Xbox controller you can buy from Amazon or some other reputable retailer um, a little USB dongle which goes in the back of your PC. But I actually have mine plugged in via USB anyway. Uh, Mr. Badman972 ETA. So it's 2 hour 15 minute flying time. We're airborne at 03. So 18. About 1 hour 10 minutes. 1 hour. Anyway, let's climb up to 310. How do I turn up the lighting for the MCP? Uh, I cannot remember how to do that. The rest of the aircraft I've got it, it's going to be getting dark soon and I'm going to be able to get the lighting turned up here. Speed holds and set about 90% to climb, or 88%. There we are, so the aircraft's now going to pitch up. Captain X ray is the FMC in op. It is a uh, beta build aircraft, it is coming, it's not modelled in the current uh, beta build. But if you wish to use FMC on route navigation, as I've discussed earlier, so long as you load a flight plan in the default Microsoft Flight Simulator. Flight plan, you can actually use that and LNAV and it will follow the magenta line in the Microsoft Flight Simulator routing. You just have to make sure you move this switch here to RNAV. What is the maximum cruise altitude or cruise level of the uh, 146 100? Obviously, weight dependent, but what is the maximum certified like that? Uh, Martin, speaking of things that are off, did you get a failure on the last x stream? No, uh, it's set to five hours. I think I've done five hours. I mean, I think it says on average, but I've not had any issues. And it was, I've had, it is on. It is on. Uh, Ventus Fox, I think the C button disables plane control so you can use the drone in that camera view. It might be different, keep on excuse I think you're right, Ventus, I've done that before. I, and I've used drone cam and then press C so you can use the flight controls in, in drone cam. <laughs> the failure time of failed probably well too. I was watching our speed here. It should be maintaining an oh to be fair, it's maintaining indicated airspeed. That's slowing down, so as soon as we level off, I don't want to exceed MMO here, so I'm just gonna go to my angle for a second. There we are, out of hold now. So we'll bring that thrust back to about 82%. Oh, that's just an MMO exceedance, nothing to see here. Captain X-Ray, any news to rotate MD-11? Um, so I will get it, guys, from feedback from the community and from watching some of the streams there. I think it's a bit half-baked. I think there's a lot of problems with it. I've heard the FMS, the navigation systems. Uh, there are a lot of people I think she saw the VATS of network with me yesterday. Looks good. I think it just needs a bit more patching. I don't know, I've not tried it yet. But it will, will definitely 100 percent fly it. There we are. So 82%. We're looking 
okay here. Right, we'll keep a close eye on that sim. But I am just going to have a quick five minute break, stretch my legs, been streaming for about two hours. I just want to make sure I've got a thrust setting which is not going to kill me. <laughs> when I get back, I don't want to be plummeting towards the sky. I'd rather go on the, fa the, the far side, if I'm honest. Right, guys, I'm just going to have a quick five minute break. Guys, if you are enjoying the stream as well, don't forget to smash the thumbs up button. And when I get back, get uh, things uh, start getting things set up for the approach into uh, into Faro. In the uh, that just might be a one four six. I'll see you shortly.
thanks a lot for the uh, break, guys. I just noticed when I was away there, look at the shadow of the fuselage on the engines. You can see the shadow of the pitot tube. I think that'll probably be an angle of attack sensor or a Look at that. <laughs> That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. How did our speed do? Ah, yeah. 82% working out quite nicely. Bit fast though. Should be doing about 6.8. I'm doing about I'm doing about 7.6. Just take a little bit more thrust off. So this is what I mean. We left it at 7.6.8, uh, and it's just slowly crept up. And and it's as if there's that increase in airspeed hasn't really affected the uh, or increased the amount of drag. Right. Um, where are we? We're only 14 miles from the next VOR. Malia. Oh, no, sorry, Castahon. Uh, from Castahon, we're going to be going to uh, Victor Tank Bravo, which I can never pronounce. 12 7. Not quite in range yet. Okay, so that's fine. We'll do. Yeah, so we'll fly overhead the VOR. Now, it's a bit of a significant. I'll say significant. A bit of a track change here. Currently on 250. Uh, so 070 radial 069, then we've got to make a turn, look on to 230, so it's a 20 degree track change. I wonder if it would be better in this situation not to stay in Vorlock, actually go heading select and then we'll intercept it outbound. I think I'll just do that. So let's go heading select. Uh, outbound 230. Martin, how are we doing fuel-wise? Let's do a fuel check. Um, just get, I'll just get established on the outbound. We're pretty much directly overhead. Charlie, Juliet, and members. We can do a time fuel check here. So 30,000 feet, five miles. That's pretty much overhead. Just wait until the code of confusion. to get re-established and we'll do our fuel check so there we are uh... so there we are cast on I thought it was um, the other one for a second no, cast on we just flown over so airborne we're airborne at 1703 21 now so we've been airborne for one hour and eight minutes, 1 hour 17, not bad, we've been flying all over different speeds though, the time's good, uh, we should have burned 3,750 kilos, we've now burned 6, 12, 18, 24, 2,400, and we should have burned 3,750, so yeah, this is saying we've saved 1,300 kilos of fuel, we should have, we took standard fuel, we should have 4,300 on board, uh, Got what's that? Just uh, so we got six thousand kilos. So we've saved we've saved a huge amount. But as mentioned, it just needs some tweaking. Let's go back to Warlock. Cool. Can't complain about extra fuel in the, in the tanks. Ah, sensor just asked me to contact them on one three two. Oh, I missed that ages ago. Three two nine seven five. Didn't hear the, the ding dong. Just having a look at our next pilot, just changing the setting around. Yeah, it should be working. 
Uh, Madrid Centre, hello, it's uh, Air France 1 for Alpha Foxtrot, flight level 310 inbound to the Victor Tango Bravo Air France uh, 1 for Alpha Foxtrot, hello, Squawk 6242. Squawk 6242, Air France 1 for Alpha Foxtrot. Air France, I need to do a bit of a French accent. Good evening, Blue Scan 214, heavy, but you can level 380. Blue Scan 214, my trade, hello, afraid of contact. I just realised my thrust just went down. I'm going to get to flight level 400, please, Blue Scan 214. Blue Scan 214, climb flight level 400. Climb flight level 400, please, Blue Scan 214. Look at this sunset now. Yeah, it's going to be a night time approach. Uh, TV D3VS got some nice chill vibes going on there, Captain. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, did we figure out the lighting brightness for that panel? Interesting to know too. You haven't yet. I haven't got anyone to answer that one. <laughs> because it's going to get dark and I won't be able to see the MCB soon. I've got the manual, so I'll just look it up. UVA 9316, contact to Barcelona 132,350, buen vuelo. Let's have a look here, lighting. Pues contactamos Barcelona 32, decimal 35, UVA 9316. Ah, glare shield lighting. Oh, on the overhead panel. Would you read uh, radar 1 is bad, eh? Uh, Welling. Uh, King Juliet Sierra, flight level 240, there, uh, approaching waypoint CECS. Just get your uh, phonetic alphabet there, sir. Oh, has that done it? I can't tell. Uh, climb yeah, flight level 370, planning King Juliet Sierra. How far away from landing? Uh, 2015, airborne at 1703, so 19. Twenty, uh, just under an hour. Just under an hour there. Uh, girl in love. Hello, Hayden J. Robbins. Good evening to you, sir. You doing well? You just tuned in. Welcome to stream. Sorry, I don't have Fly Live. Actually, I'll try that one more time. Let me just because everyone always asks where we're we going. Where are we? It was working on all the test sectors, test streams, and all of a sudden, when I try and use it today, it is just not working. Air France, one, four, alpha, fox drop. Why? Why are you doing this? Just try a shorter call sign, mate. So I can see all the information, it's showing me the overlay, it has all the information as it should be displayed, but it's just not displaying it on, on the screen. So overlay. How bizarre. Never seen it do this before. Ah, uh, now I'm mixing. See what I mean? This is one of the things in Microsoft Flight Simulator. You, you set a thrust setting and it's like there's no drag. It just keeps accelerating constantly. I mean, obviously, if you set a very high thrust setting, it will do that. Uh, but usually you get to a point where it accelerates and it's just been continuously, slowly accelerating for about three minutes. 92%. Was that magic number? Does it matter that's the aircraft code? Yeah, let's try and change that. But I, I had it all the test sector as that aircraft code. What's really strange is on the overlay design, I can see all the information. It says ETA 1904 Zulu, which obviously has, has the crow flies. 30,000 feet, 226 heading, ground speed 452 knots. No idea. I've always had problems with it in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It works fine in X-Plane. Change the aircraft. 
gaff type anyway. I'd just put one four six perhaps. No. Change the text, but um, and it's showing me the information, but it's just not coming up on the overlay. Ah well. I shall turn it off. What I've had to do with the sim update could be N2, yeah, could be. If you ain't clacking, you're slacking if you're doing well, Presley. Absolutely. Oh, I'll be clacking a few times today. There we go. Right, anyway, well, we've got the lighting all sorted. Sun's about to set shortly. It looks absolutely spectacular. Simple set up lighting on the overhead panel here as well. Uh, if I can work out how. Oh wow, that's very bright. That'll do. Pedestal lighting all down here. Lighting looks really good. Ooh. Just put a little bit of flood lighting on there. Look at that. Right then, so... Here we are. We've gone overhead Victor Tango Bravo now on the... Uh, hold on, uh, 65 cent, I think I already went active on the next video, didn't I? Uh, hold your horses. I'm still flying outbound from this VOR, 156. We've already passed another one. Whoops, well, that's not a problem. Uh, Victor Tango Bravo, just quickly tuned 12.7. Um, I mean, so distracting. It's, you know, it's very important when you're flying an aircraft like this. Keep an eye on everything, make sure you're happy where you are. Um, we're now about to the Hello, breathing contact. There we are, so there's just a line that calls that. Should be on the zero four five, so we put two two five. There we are, all lock. Um, so we're now flying inbound to Hinojaza del Duc VOR. But once we get there, we're going to make a left turn towards the Seville VOR. And at Seville, soon after Seville, we'll be commencing our descent. I'll put Seville thirteen seven here. Still out of range for that VOR. So about uh, 30 minutes. Madre de la Buenas Noches, Siberia, 0429 on the ground. Descent 1 and Bill Aldebar. Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, I had to press number 5 to neutralize. Give me 0429, get my average 5. 35 as well, Iberia, 0429. Do you like that sim? Uh, on the uh, V Pilot client, the RT sounds fantastic. Really spot on. Um, right, so let's talk a little bit about this approach. We're coming in via Seville, um, again, like departing from um, Nice, Faro's stars are all Arna based. We are not Arna compliant today. We are the Arna at best. We can navigate using this the default. FMS. I'm sorry, the default box of flight series map, but we're going to route conventionally. And if you, if I grab the Faro uh, charts here, it's a bit of an aggressive turn. You'll see we can't fly any of these stars, but I think on one of these reference pages, it talk about non RNAV. There we are. So non RNAV aircraft. So this is for us. Non RNAV arrivals. Non RNAV aircraft shall proceed to the Villafranca VOR DME and expect ATC instructions for final approach. So that's exactly what we're doing on our flight plan. We're from Seville going to route uh, direct to the Villafranca VOR. And it's runway 10 in Faro, which is quite unusual. The prevailing wind and, and preferred runway is runway 28. I, I think at all the times I've been to. Faro, I've maybe landed on 10 less than 10% of the time. Uh, surface wind right now is 110 at 9 knots. Um, so it, just coming in from the east there, it's going to put us in a nice position for the procedural approach if there's no ATC. So we can't fly any stars. We're following the guidance with regards to non RNAV routing direct to Villafranca. And for 10, they have two uh, approaches. Now you have a 
Ilyas approach which positions you from Venol, which is an RNF, uh, off the start, or they have the procedural old school Ilyas Yankee, and this is going to be perfect for us because we're coming in from this direction. Um, so it's pretty much we'll go ahead the VOR, outbound 7.4 DME or 8 miles off the VOR, then tune the ILS, and then we can intercept the localizer onto a 7.4 DME final. Well, it's out to 10 mile final by the time we get there established. Um, so that's what we'll do. Descent planning then. I use descent planning that works in the 737 quite well. It's quite conservative in this aircraft but that's not a bad thing. So what we need to work out is what height would it be overhead the VOR. So ideally for a procedural approach when you fly outbound like this, going outbound over the VOR for a continuous descent would have been around five to six thousand feet. So that's what we're going to aim for is to be at around six thousand feet at far right overhead. This is this is if we do not get vectors from any ATC that comes on our sim, otherwise we'll fly the procedure. Currently at 31,000 feet, that means we need to lose 25,000 feet. 31,000 to 6,000 is, is, is 25,000 feet. Times that by 375 miles. So 25,000 feet to lose, 75 miles is rough distance that's going to take. We keep on taking a few miles miles and tailwind headwind components or not, but that works fine for this aircraft. Uh, so all we're going to do is, once we're inbound to Villafranca, is wait to a 75 DME and then we'll commence our descent uh, in, in idle descent and we can use some speed distance time calculations to work out what vertical speed we need to maintain to make 6,000 feet overhead Villafranca. Um, to make a, a CD. From the VOR then. This one. Uh, we're going to go outbound for 250, outbound until 7.4 off the DME, off the RLS, or 8 miles off Villafranca. Um, we'll go down at that point from 3,000 to 2 feet, we can go to 2,000 feet to the, as, low, as low as we can go. Um, MSA, the real issue is really to the north is the highest, 3,500, so any problems will stick to the south. And a 7, 8 DME Villafranca, we're going to make that. Um, Right turn onto final, it's at the ILS, 2,000 feet at 60 me, and it's 3 ILS in the FMS. Um, this is a high quality airport as well in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's been tailored and handmade, I think, by Guy Simulations or Orbex on behalf of Microsoft Flight Simulator. It comes with the SimWorld Update 8. It looks really good, really impressed with it. Um, yeah, we'll intercept the ILS. Frequency course is minimum, so no point setting it yet because remember we're using conventional navigation. I can't start tuning navage yet, so the turn from downwind base lake final is very intensive because you've got to tune, switch over ILS frequencies and courses, wind in the new course, um, or I can use the tail of the RMI to navigate. It's going to keep us busy. Uh, and then the minimum, let's so have a look here, so 224 feet. I think to get the rad out call out, so we have set a decision height though, so that is 200 feet AGL. And the radio amp works, which is really cool. We've got dimness the radio altimeter. But on the on the altimeter, it'll be 224 feet, which I don't think you can bug in anyway. Um, which is pretty cool. Nice and simple. Uh, runway length available, nice long runway in Faro, two thousand well, not super long, but long enough, two thousand five hundred meters. We'll plan to vacate Charlie one first left. And uh, parking stands after Charlie one. If there's ATC we'll go to a sign stand, otherwise we'll just park wherever. Nice and simple. Don't think there's a performance calculator, but um, I'll sort of wing it on the approach there. Well, what I like again about the 146, it is relatable to the 737 with regards to the automation. There's some subtle changes with regards to vertical speed and sync mode, but uh, otherwise it's uh, pretty simple. There we are. We have covered pretty much everything. Um, Manfred Richtofen, where did you get the charts? Those are the Navigraph charts. I have a Navigraph subscription, which is about eight, nine euros a month. You get Jefferson charts, pretty much all the same Jefferson charts real pilots use. Very cool. There is a Navigraph plugin for Microsoft Flight Simulator to bring your charts on screen. I'm not a big fan of that for me personally. I quite like having it open on a separate window and I could just show it on stream whenever I use it. Uh, Will, thought the stream died for a second, back to normal now though. All seems good here, I've had no reports of any stream outages on my side, so... Sometimes just refreshing it usually is enough to fix it. 
90 Luxury, hello, with the contact Madrid, flying through to Pony. HVOR actually was civil, so 13-7, we have got civil in range now. Flight direct Pony. It's probably another 100 miles to top descent, but we can't go fast at this thing. It's like Luxury, Roger, climb flight level 360 now. Climb flight level 360, thank you, Jim, and it's late break. That sounds 1-4 down for Fox, monitor Unicom 1-2-2, to decimal 8, bye-bye. Uh, Unicom 122 decimate our uh, Air France 1 for Alpha Fox Thanks to ATC by. Back on Unicom guys. Robert S missed the group flight. Oh no. Sorry, he can make it. It was a good one. Good morning, Kyrie, yesterday. Chris Kent back from Sainsbury's. Excellent. Turn at supermarkets are available. Uh, Roof Fortune, hello, missed the start of the stream, the cruise because business. Happy <laughs> I seem to be back in time for the approach. Excellent, sir. Roof Fortune. We should be starting our descent in about 10 15 minutes from now. But uh, actually, you know what can we do? Look around the aircraft. Oh, look at that. You know what? Just sometimes the, the thrust change. It's about 80% speed, it's a bit high, and it's just very fiddly. Take a little bit of it one off there. That looks just... Poggers, I think is the word <laughs> people would use. And again, love what yoke do you have, or what frontal quadrant do you have? So today I'm just using the Airbus side stick, and I also have the Boeing Thrustmaster uh, yoke and frontal quadrant. Which I would have used this aircraft, but I haven't got it set up in Microsoft Flight Simulator yet. <laughs> Andre Air France uh, pilot, I want to hear your accent, I believe. Uh, Velma, when is this coming out? I'm so excited. Should be next month. I wasn't sure at the start of stream, but some people have said April. I'm never going to say that. Uh, I have an Oreo addiction, said Justin Roberts. That's not a bad thing. Uh, O'Neill, in real life, do you know which gate you're going to park after landing at the airport, or you just get a random gate assigned by the ground controller? Uh, yeah, we get assigned a gate. Um, we have a specific app on our uh, EFBs where if you update it prior to departure, it'll often show you the gates. It depends how long the flight is, but if you're doing a four hour sex, it might not be the case. But you can contact a handling agency. Uh, inbound if you really want to know the stand number, otherwise we usually know which terminal it is and we just wait until we're assigned our stands. Look at the sun reflecting on the aircraft, does it? Just before it sets. Absolutely insane. A guy I love, it's the Boeing Yoke, the new one. Yes, if you type in YouTube, Flight Data Sim, Thrustmaster Boeing Yoke, you'll see my preview of the uh, Yoke. Select a, this is obviously in the drone camera, but you can have a minimums, cabin minimums, view in minimums, the um, approaching minimums. cockpit sort of camera. It's quite hard to get the drone camera sort of giving that view. Oh, there we go. Astrogene, two months to remember, thanks, buddy. Defi Burt or Romzit de Gas. Uh, no idea what I said there. Could have been anything. Thank you very much. Yes, the membership comments don't trigger any audible nonsense from Microsoft Jane or Gary. Speed thing, so yeah, speed's dropped off a little low there. So, so just four percent change in N1, and the speed's just dropping off, dropping off, dropping off. 
And because I've not been concentrating, we've just flown right over the VR. So next uh, course radial is 207. Just float over it six miles away, so we'll just get back on track there. Chris Gatton, you could do a packet of chalky bigs in one session. I think everyone could. Astro said, Oh man, French for butter or go around challenge. Ah, very good. Well, sacre bleu. Um, <laughs> don't do butter or go arounds anymore. It's not a Sunday, I only ever do those on Sundays. Anyway, bring up Seville on box one thirteen seven. Look at that! I need to clean the windscreen. As soon as you get close, it's, it's going to be a wicked. It's going to be a wicked um, approach. Colours uh, are spot on, those kind of deep purples you get, just as sun refracts through the atmosphere. It looks amazing. XR Viper, yeah, I saw that as a standard question. Who do I work for? Some believe it's Japan Airlines. I cannot confirm or deny. I'm on standby today still, actually, but no calls. I was a little bit concerned. But, uh, looking good. Excellent, guys, now inbound to the Sevilla VOR. After Seville, uh, we'll be inbound to uh, Villafranca. Which is located on the airport, far over your Twelve eight. Ooh, where are we going? It's just making a bit of a. Oh, look at my speed go! Look at that. God, I miss it. Auto throttle. <laughs> There we are, and we are 140 miles from Faro. Remember, this is at 75 is when we want to start our descent. Uh, Ventus, what's the following flight you've flown? PIC. Well, since I became a skipper, um, the Canary runs from the UK. About four and a half hours, four hours 45 if you've got a strong headwind. Longest flight I've ever done on the 73 is 5 hours and 15 minutes, and then I had to do return sector. <laughs> I mean, so on the long days, guys, we do two sectors, Canaries and back from the UK. And the, the total flight time is enough to get to Chicago in one day. You can do that five days in a row. <laughs> I was just wondering because you were talking about Air France. Oh, no, that's the aircraft we're in today. Oh, look at that. Oh, mega! Isn't that just it's sick? <laughs> it just looks amazing. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. Nice. D3VS, you're loving the smooth jazz vibes? Ah, yes, that always comes on. We like to roll some smooth jazz vibes on it and uh, find it sim. But it's nice hearing you enjoy the view so much when you get to enjoy the roofing on a weekly basis. That's true, but just seeing it represented in a simulator from the cover of your own home is just... It's just... crazy. 
colours are so spot on. The night lighting and uh, yeah, it looks absolutely incredible. Sims, it's just getting, it's, it's going places, it's good. XR Viper, which you prefer? Explain Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm guessing you might switch to Microsoft Flight Simulator most of the time when the PMGG 737 comes out. That's uh, a definite an aircraft will be flying, but um, X.11 has its very much its own merits. Still, by far, is the simulator regards to accurate atmospheric modeling of the atmosphere drag, thrust. Zebo mod has been programmed in a way to replicate uh, as close as possible how the real aircraft behaves, especially with thrust modelling. So, so I demonstrated once on a stream or a tutorial. I did a uh, field limited takeoff or performance takeoff where basically the maximum weight that we can lift for departure is is governed by the runway length. So it's quite a short runway, and this guarantees you clear the end of the runway in the event of an engine failure by 30, 35 feet. And we did that, and I did a rejected takeoff, and I used literally every meter of the runway. It was very impressive. And then I took off, and I had about 100 foot clearance at the end of the runway. So it works spot on. Um, so, yeah, a lot of people say which one's better. Microsoft Flight Sim Explained, they both have their pros and cons. I'm not going to switch ever. I'm going to be continuing to use both platforms moving forward. Uh, of course, we'll be flying the PMBG 737, probably quite a lot as well. Uh, but we'll always be uh, returning uh, to Zebo Mod and. Uh, a lot of comparisons between the two will be made. But they are improving things. Uh, I found when Microsoft Flight Simulator came out, some argued it was a bit rushed, and I found that some of the sim updates seemed to make things worse. It improved other areas, perhaps graphics or things that we, we really enjoy in the sim. Uh, but I noticed sometimes they had a period where you'd land and flare and the aircraft would float for a thousand meters you'd have the idle thrust you'd float for a thousand meters and the speed you would have lost like five knots um, it was just crazy at some periods they seem to be really concentrating a bit more now on the atmospheric modeling and how aircraft behave and they're bringing more complex simulations which is really good news really good news Anyway, yeah, we should be on Seville here at 13.7. We're still outbound, but it's fine. 14 miles. And then next VOR is going to be uh, firing. 75 miles, remember, we're going to start on descent. So 116. We've got about 30 miles from top of descent. I just love going old school. Although the mouse cursor bug... <laughs> when they fix that. I'll be very happy about it. <laughs> right, so how long does it take to get to the air after arriving at the airport and do you do the walk arounds? Uh, so <clears throat> my operator report is uh, 45 minutes before the scheduled off block time. That's the minimum report time. Typically we're there an hour before. Um, brief the crew, walk to the aircraft or sometimes brief on the aircraft depending on the airport and um, get the aircraft set up. So typically from, from getting at the airport, depending on the size of the airport, you know, I usually get to the airport 15 minutes before the report, um, 20 minutes to the, the crew room or to the aircraft, and then we'll, we'll brief and uh, we'll be on our way. Yep, uh, pilot monitoring does the walk around every sector, every single sector. I need to turn the lighting down a smidge in here, but let's just get sorted on the next inbound VOR. sensitive there. Heading select. But the beauty is this aircraft is it uh, this um, BA-146 I just fly. It's handling. Everything works. We've been using radio navigation the whole way. All the systems seem to be working. I have limited knowledge of said systems. Uh, but it all seems to be doing a fantastic job. Twelve eight, twelve eight. We'll now pre-tune the ILS. 
Uh, which is... Oh, why is my chance not working? Uh, 1105. Uh, we talked about top of descent. 75 miles away from the VR, so 106 to run. So 20, well, 30 miles to top of descent. Is the mouse set to legacy? That's under assistance. I think it's much better than the current with this update. I think they've definitely improved it. What the mouse cursor is still disappearing, but a lot less frequently. I probably had it do it about five or six times during the stream. Um, so yeah, and now they've said they'll address it next update. Oh, that's, yeah, that's better. That's way too bright. Before. Shot the VOR radial slightly. We're now on the uh, Uniform November 747 radial, just intercepting the 258 outbound. Uh, Rufchen, now you're all here. Could someone happen to have recommendations for a good IFR via uh, VATSIM tutorial series or maybe a Dutch community? Yes, well, the, um, I always forget this guy's name. He's training to be a pilot now as well. Uh, uh, I'm, I don't think he makes much content now. He is Dutch, and he's made Vatsim tutorial flights. In fact, when I was new to Vatsim, I actually watched some of his videos on how to set it up and, and how it works. Aviation Pro? Can't remember now. Yeah, I got it right. Simon C. Aviation Pro. Perfect. Yeah, very good videos. Bit out, a bit of it, not even outdated. They're old, but they're still very relevant. Look at this weather. We'll do one more fuel check. We just passed Seville, and we know it's been very much um, under reading or been you know, saving a tremendous amount of fuel. So there we are, just passed over what is that? Okay. Uh, Seville. Just move Navigraph over because I can't even see the PDF document. Anyway, our Seville, um, we should have burnt 4.8 tonnes of fuel. Fuel use for us is 8, 16, 24, 32, maybe 3,300 kilos. So we saved about 1,500 kilos of fuel. We should have 3, 3 on board. We actually have 5 and a half. Was that 2 and a half? Oh no, five, no sorry, 2 and a half, 5 tonnes. So yeah, we've saved about 1,500 kilos. So I went standard today. Matt, you've downloaded the Sony Simulation 74 mod. Going to give it a try tonight. Have you ever played around with it? Uh, no, I haven't. I have heard of it, and I've heard it's yeah, it's it's pretty basic. But uh, you can use our Navi Nav FMS. Yeah, I think it'll be a, a fun stream one day. I've been saying that for years. <laughs> Ten miles on top of the same guys. Fire it really nice. 1007 knots, 15 degrees. QNH is 1012. It's a lovely evening down there. Look at that. You get that. You can see. Look at that. That's just superb. Approaching 75 miles. Should we start descent? Let's go. No ATC. Let's go down to 80 initially. Nice safe level above the Mora. Not going to hit anything. So 80 set. I want to do 250 knots in the descent. So what I'm just going to do is start reducing thrust to idle. Bug 250 knots. As soon as the circular ball is there and you put descent on here as well that ensures that you have sufficient N2 for pressurization so descent that'll ensure it doesn't go below 60% there's 250 knots so indicated airspeed hold the aircraft's now going to pitch to maintain 250 knots in descent top of descent ladies and gentlemen and what we'll do 
we'll do some, once we get a stabilised in descent with a steady rate of descent, so we'll do a speed distance time calculation to work out how many minutes it'll take us to get to the VOR. We can then work out what required rate of descent we need to maintain to fly a CDA. MCP 2002, does the FMS work? It will do. It's uh, coming up in a future patch. Remember, air this aircraft is a beta version work in progress. It is not representative of the final product. There are features still missing, one of which is the FMS. But if you were to currently use it in its current state, you can actually navigate using the Microsoft Flight Simulator fly plan so long as it's programmed. See, it's a little bit off because I'm using VR navigation. Um, and I could use the... the uh, LNAV feature, if I so wished. So it looks like we're quite stable in descent here. Um, our ground speed will reduce as we descend due to air density. Um, let's just call it 400 knots for now. So distance we've got 66 miles to run. We'll do about 400 knots. And that's going to take us 10 minutes. Okay, so 10 minutes. Probably about 11, 12 minutes really, if we, as we slow down the descent. We need to be at 6,000 feet. 28,000 feet now. 6,000 feet. So 22,000 feet. 10 minutes. We need to do 2,200 feet per minute. So at this rate of descent, not good enough. Okay, so we've got some options. We can either increase our descent speed, which is what I'm going to do. So we need to do about 2,200 feet per minute, really. So what I can do is switch to vertical speed and hold the sync button, which I'm doing now. And I'm just going to increase or pitch nose down to do 2,200 feet per minute. I don't think the sync light is illuminated. There we are. I hold, let go of the sync button. And that rate of descent I've set now should get us around 6,000 feet. Just be wary of the airspeed. Okay, it will increase, but we're not under any speed restriction. We can let that bleed up to 280, 300 knots if we wish. That's just some basic mathematics to ensure a continuous descent. We'll update that again when we get to around 10,000 feet above. 16,000 feet to see where we're at. Always with descent planning, be on the conservative side. If, you, if you're not so sure, you know, start to send 10 minutes sooner, increase that rate of descent slightly. Better to be level instead of trying to drive in the approach um, high going around. You do, I do have the air brake at the back. It's extremely effective though. Extremely effective. This is far more efficient to do it this way. <laughs> Martin, come on, click the Xbox triggers, side slip to the threshold. I'm not touching that controller again. <laughs> and look at this beautiful coastline, Spain and Portugal. <laughs> it's absolutely stunning. There we are, so speed seems to be pretty stable, around 278, 280 knots, just keeping on, it's still increasing slightly, but we can let that go all the way up if needed. Oh, a f official Just Flight is here, thank you very much for popping in, hope you're doing well. Thank you, as always, thank you very much for the access, we've been enjoying the 146 today. And thank you for answering any questions. Guys, Just Flight someone representing just lights here so if you have any questions about the aircraft regarding release dates anything like that I've done my best to answer as many as possible but uh, now's the time to ask John Curtin hi dad hello uh, Mel Lemel advice for a beginner yeah so if you're new to flight simming I'd recommend maybe just having a play around with the uh, GA aircraft Microsoft Flight Simulator do have some basic flight tutorials which are actually quite good for beginners just give you the very basic fundamentals and before you know it you'll be flying around in in more complex aircraft like this using old school navigation. Night Beauty, lots of love to find us in a fantastic weekend. Thank you very much. Lots of love to you as well. Hello, Danny Crumpet. Uh, Josh, even Captain, for shorter runways of a short taxi, and do you ever land with AP running? Nope, we'll always turn it on. It, um, we have a cool down period after landing of three minutes, so 
it takes to start the APU about 60 seconds, so there's no requirement to ever have to start the APU on the approach. Um, the idea is to time it so as soon as we get onto stand, put the parking brake on APUs on the bus. Takes practice. Uh, Martina, what's the current phase of flight in the descent? 18,000 feet. We've got about 15 to 20 minutes until touchdown. Turn that groovy music off for now. Here is the approach chart as well. We're flying directly to the VOR. We are near Minta. Going to go outbound 250. ADME back onto the ILS. So approaching 16,000 feet, got about 10,000 feet to go. Our uh, ground speed's dropped around 380 knots now. We're doing 290 indicated. So distance, let's call that 33 miles. <coughs> speed, we'll call that about 370, so it's going to keep dropping. Uh, so we're going to be in another five minutes until we're over the VOR, and we've got to do 10,000 feet. So yeah, it's 2,000 feet per minute is what we're needing. Uh, this rate of percent is is absolutely perfect. I'm now going to use a little bit of this speed brake just to start bringing that speed back to 250 knots um, once we get to around 12,000 feet. But it's absolutely spot on here. Uh, Matthew and Fury could do that if I do it. Bleeds off landing. Never had to do that though. Had plenty of engine bleed off takeoff. So yeah, same with us. I've never, in, in exceptional circumstances, if you need the missed approach climb performance, there is an option to a bleed off landing. But yeah, it, in the NG, I don't know. Maybe you've got to be. Maybe the only time we'd use it if we happen to be landing in Lukla. <laughs> we might need it there. But uh, yeah, it's very unusual. Bleeds off takeoff for us. Uh, if you don't know, guys, Matthew Presley's a CRJ pilot. He often pops in. Uh, answering great questions. Um, for us, speeds off takeoff is not that uncommon. We do have to do them. Um, but we always try to try a different flap setting first from the flap 5 default. So, you know, the higher flap settings for improved climb, lower flap settings for improved short field. Uh, and then we try bleeds off takeoff because of the associated threats and risks in the NG doing a bleeds off. Uh, just want no problem being here for most of the flight. Martin has two cams pilot. Very oh, Martin is cams pilot. Perfect. I spoke to him in email today. Excellent. Right, approaching ten thousand feet. So let's use this speed break, and it is extremely effective. So I'm going to go all the way to out here and look at the speed come off. <laughs> it's like a parachute being deployed. But I've spoken to one four six drivers. They said it was absolutely crazy. If you're in, he said if you're in indicated airspeed holds with that out, it'll do. 15,000 feet per minute rate of descent, so I do believe it's when it's as, uh, as effective as that. There is Faro Airport. What is this for CDA? This thrust has been idle the entire descent. Oh, works. Three times stable. I wonder if I'll get the virtual cockpit talking to me on the approach, which reminds me, I think I need to select the landing flap setting. I'm going to use 30, there's my mouse cursor gone again, so 33, there we are, that's set my bugs. I think, well, I don't think it has. Ah, uh, how do I get my bugs to set? Not so sure. Uh-oh, it's brought my V-speed all the way back. Oh my god, where I've lo where's the um, bug for this speed? I can't, it's all dark now, I can't remember which one it was. Oh, it's on, it's on the airspeed indicator. Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to 220 knots because I want to start slowing down soon. So I'm going to use speed brake now until we get all the way to 220 knots. There's an aircraft over there. Port on the left, so that means it's flying towards us. Uh, sorry, put the red light on the right. Uh, ah, red light on the right. He's flying towards us. So bring the speed back to 220 knots. Post cruise checks now, so fuel lights. Oh, we're not familiar with this old aeroplane yet. Oh, mouse cursor, where are you? Thank you. On. Oh, 220 now, so let's stow the speed brake and indicated airspeed hold, which is IAS. 
Well, oh, come on. So we're just going to continue to send it to 20. Oh, it's just leveled off at 80. That's fine. I'm going to go down to 6,000 feet now. QNH is 1012. So 6,000. And indicated airspeed hold is re engaged. Going to send it to 20 knots. Bugs require flap deployment. Thanks, Cam's pilot. Oh. Whenever I'm flying, I just like aircraft you've developed or been a developer with. You need to be here. <laughs> so as soon as we select flap 1, which I can do... Oh, sorry. I made my 7.3. Flap 18. I need to be below 210 knots for that. We're just going to maintain 220 now. This descent rate's really nice as we fly over the VOR. Remember, once we get to the VOR, we're going to fly outbound on the 258... Oh, sorry, 250. Currently flying directly to the VOR there. Absolutely beautiful evening for this as well. Don't forget our arm. My goodness me, thank you. This has been... I, it's very fluky, this descent. <laughs> it's been going very well so far. But as soon as we overhead the VOR, we can go down from 6,000 to uh, 2,000 feet. This is a, a high quality airport by Microsoft Flight Simulator. We'll switch to daytime afterwards so we can have a little look at it. And th this is a free update as well. Uh, can I click again once final approach flap is selected? Okay. Is Borat on board the 146 at night, Beauty? Yes, he's on board. <laughs> he's always on board. Wow, 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 he's a very nice. <laughs> oh. Check, two miles to go. There we are. So, I'm just going to go heading select for a second. Well, actually, no, I could probably do that vol lock thing, but I just want to make sure we're accurate on it, so I'm going to go heading select. Oh, now it's so dark, it's very difficult to see the instrumentation. So, heading select. There we are, 250 for the course. About to go over the cone of confusion. We can now go down to 2,000 feet. Airspeed hold, there we are. 2,000 feet, just make an adjustment to that heading to intercept the 250. We're now outbound. 6,000 feet. Oh. They just love it when a plan comes together. This is just beautiful. Going places, I like it. I like it. All done. So a little bit left here. Now what I'm going to do is actually start uh, pulling the tail on the RMI, so I can actually get this set up for the ILS. So we're going to go outbound for a distance of eight DME, and I'm going to start selecting flaps very short, uh, very quickly, or soon. Um, so just still on the heading there. So we're going to set the inbound course for the radio which, uh, VOR, which is 101. It's hard when it's dark. One oh one. We're using so I'm using the tail of the RMI to navigate here on that two five zero. One oh one for Jim. Fifty. Thank you very 40, much. Lizzie 30, Windsor for your 20, donation. 10. <laughs> Awful timing, Your Majesty. Thank you. <laughs> one is most entertained seeing one thrown into a clock shop, doing a simply marvelous job so <laughs> far. If I still had my 146, I'd offer you a job unless one is a qualified Royal Land Rover driver. <laughs> I'm no words. I don't find the Land Rover. Oh, 7.4. I'm a little bit high here, actually. And I need to select flaps. Uh, oh, good. Yeah, we'll start turning final now. 7.4 DME. I'm going to go over to the ILS. Thank you, Your Majesty. Glad you enjoyed the content as usual. I'm sorry, 146s have gone. <laughs> right, I can press my bugs now. There we go. Perfect. Uh, for the next flap setting, I need to be below 180 knots. 
little bit high here. That's 180. She need a bit of speed brake to get the speed back. Go to 180 knots. Vertical speed. Just going to increase that rate of descent now to about a thousand feet per minute. Speed's good. 160. Thanks, Your Majesty. Oh, got to keep going that heading round to intercept the ILS. 10 miles a little high. Again, I'm just going to increase that rate of descent to around 2,000 feet per minute. Don't want to be doing much more than that. Again, I can utilise that speed brake if needed. We've got flaps to um, 24. Max speed is 180, so we're below that. A little high on the glide. That's coming in 10 miles, 4,000. With this aircraft, that's going to come in. I need to increase my rate of descent there. Vertical speed, I'm using the pitch hold mode. Good, just keep that speed at 160, that's nice. I've completely cut the corner off this. I need to go a little bit more off the base leg. Look at the RMI. We need on 101 on the tail here. Or the head, the head needs to be on 101. Uh, this is the problem sometimes with, with charts. If you're not happy, if you don't have LNAV, I've sort of cut the corner on the chart a little bit here. Um, you try, it's designed to do a continuous turn straight onto the final. But look at the head of the tail now. It's not even only on, we're still 10 degrees off. So I'm just going to cut the corner off slightly, which is actually going to help me get back onto the glide slope. Um, that's just the way way it is. You, you know, in LNAV, it'll do a lovely curved turn for you in heading slope because we're going slower in this aircraft. It's just how it looks. Right, that should do us now, so I'm going to turn on to an intercept heading. I'm adding thrust now manually to maintain 160 knots. I'm only, only going to be intercepting localizer at around 7, 6 miles. Alarm 4 lock. So there's the glide slip as well, looking okay. That's localizer capture, I believe. Yeah. Speed's okay. Now I'm going to arm approach, which is GSL. There's the runway. Just going to stop descending there. We'll intercept the ILS. Very late here. Actually, you know what? So I'm using the sync feature with vertical speed here to get onto the ILS. Not the tidiest one, but. Um, We've still intercepted it nice and stable. Just adding thrust here. Drop the gear. And we'll select flat 30. I need to be low 145 knots for the landing flat. And we've got glide slope capture. Yes, we do. Glide slope capture is green. Perfect. And we can now select landing flap. Update the speeds again. There we go. Yeah, so cut the corner slightly, but it's working nicely, and it's flying the ILS beautifully. We've got glide slope and localizer capture and active. Look at that, it's making adjustments to stay on the pitch. Obviously, it's manual thrust here. And I shall now complete the landing checklist. So, missed approach altitude I need to set. Uh, I work low 3,000 feet. 3,000 feet is set. We need to disable TMS at some point. Well, I might do that now. We've got landing flap selected. Speed's nice and stable. The weather is beautiful here. Uh, disengage TMS. Switch on the APU as well. well. I'll do that after landing. Disengage TMS. Okay, power's off. No. There we are. 1, Checked. Looking good. Three reds, one white. It is showing us a little bit higher there. There might be a slight mismatch between the ILS and the glide slope, but we're looking good. Disconnecting. So no autopilot's disconnected. So we'll start pitching up just to about 500 feet per minute. We're going, well, to be fair, we're going much slower than I'm used to. This is the approach speed of an empty 737, uh, 115 knots or so. I mean, a completely empty 737. There's two reds, two whites. And the handling on this, I mean, I've not flown this aircraft, but it feels just like the X-11 uh, 146, which is which is really promising. There we are. So, got a nice target rate of ascent in there, about 600 feet per minute. Keep the runway at the same point in the windscreen. Speed's good. 
on localizer, tad high on the glide slope, tad high on the pappy. So just increase that rate of descent, no more than a thousand feet per minute, back on profile, reset that target attitude. It's about uh, two and a half degrees nose up, it looks a little bit high again. Getting a little bit high, oof, one dot high. Whoa. Thousand feet, no more. Whoop. There we go, back on, <laughs> just getting used to that picture. Speed's good. Oh my god, stop going high. Three whites. I guess the attitude looks a bit unusual for me, me in the 7-3. That's checked. Minimums. Continue. Minimums. Continue. <laughs> Looking very nice. Over the threshold, a little high. 50. 40. Keep descending. 30. Check. 20. Close. Oh, but I'm way too high. <laughs> I forgot we're so low to the ground in this thing. 10? 10. <laughs> we're down. Ooh. Not the smoothest speed breaks out. No reverses, remember. I've done something today because on all the test sectors, the virtual first officer um, would speak to you and say spoilers, speeds, airspeed alive decreasing. So I've somehow done something not to trigger uh, that guy. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Faro. We are down safely. We'll take the next exit here on the left. And that was a really enjoyable flight. Really enjoyable. I hope you enjoyed it too, guys. Butter or bump? It was a bit of a bump. I flared way too high. Um, we were probably just outside the touchdown zone as well. Anyway, we have taken uh, exit Bravo. Let me just grab my Navigraph charts uh, here. Oh, I think it's somehow cl I accidentally closed Navigraph. Well done. Charts. I missed the exit. I pretty much used all the runway here. Unbelievable. We'll go in via Delta. There we are. I don't need speed break away. Turn that sound slightly. It's very quiet in here. There we go. So you should be able to see Navigraph there. We're here on Delta. Making a left turn, and we'll let's take one of the terminal stands because you can attach an air bridge to this aircraft. Um, someone was saying earlier in Discord that when he used to fly this aircraft from Amsterdam, that they actually attach the air bridge, albeit very low to the ground. And then I want to actually show you the scenery. This is completely free scenery from Microsoft Flight Simulator, included with SimWorld Update um, 5. Very, very nice. Excellent. So, taxi music is coming on. There we go, and we'll uh, start doing the clean up here. Let's get the APU up and running first. Super mega aircraft, there we are, starting that up. Taxi lights on. So, I'm struggling to find my way around this cockpit sometimes, especially in dark, uh, when it's dark. There we are, not so bright. Uh, APU's up and running, switch on APU, confirm the flaps are uh, selected. Landing, so taxiing in, taxi lights off, TMS transponder to standby. And start switches, continuous ignition can come off. There we are, the next stuff is when we're on stand. Right, let's take the ANA Aeroport Auto Forest, let's give us a stand 320. See the strobe light flashing in the corner. Uh, crazy ground crew. <laughs> strobe lights, where were you? Up here, I think. Strobe's off. There you go. Do I actually have guidance here? I don't know if this works. Let's just go right past here. No, that's a static image, unfortunately. So, that's a shame. It doesn't have SAM equivalent yet. That's showing taxi right, but the actual quality is very nice of the scenery. Where do I stop? I have no clue. Why? Probably not as far as that. <laughs> That'll do. Right. So, parking brake is set, and APU power is available. So, switch off taxi light when you turn on the stand. Oh, 
stops. They are off. Once you come to a stop, engage parking brake. Uh, the aircraft is depressurized. Switch off all hydraulic pumps. There we are. Hydraulic pumps are off. And generator one and four off as well. Professional streamer here. There's the electrics. Gen one and four off. And we can now shut the engines down. Four, four, three, two, one. There we are. Light can come off as well. And is up here. Oh, we should have a logo light on. Got to tell everyone we're Air France. There we are. Beautiful. That's pretty much it. Ice detection system's the only thing I didn't turn off. Uh, very, very nice indeed. Let's have a little look at these comments then on the approach here. Approach went well. I was really happy with the approach. Descent planning worked out perfectly over the Beacon 6000. It ended up a little high. Um, turning base, um, but I didn't have the charts up for you guys. Let me just find the um, ILS chart for you. Why is that not working? Have a graph. There we go. Um, so, what happened was we got out to 7.4 DB, and you see this turn here, very wide turn as well. What happened was I started turning it a little bit past 7.4, about there, and I started turning way inside. I was actually going towards the localizer and I looked at the RMI. It was showing sort of 10 degrees off the final approach track so I actually then had to turn uh, left a bit to sort of do a bit more of a base leg. Um, so it'd be, I don't know if the 146 has it. You really want an angler bank selector just do a much shallower turn. It would have been easy It would have been easy if I just disconnected the hand flu instead of trying to use the automation. But uh, no, it worked out okay. Thanks Lizzie Winter for the fiver. Appreciate it. Control eyes for the flashlight. I remember that one. from nine months to a few years depending on aircraft complexities of getting access to the real aircraft to research. I mean you're talking about your devs comes by very cool. Bottom on bump, unbelievable. It wasn't too bad. Uh, have you ever tried Toby Iron Tracker or Sim? I've heard of it, D3VS. It's something I'd like to try out, that's for sure. Uh, Roof Jun, loving the engine sounds, very cool. Uh, Roof Jun, that's important, grandparents are precious. Absolutely. I don't know who you're referring to. I'll ask you questions for that, but they're not around forever. If you ever get a chance, don't forget to see your relatives when you get chance to do so very important amazing well just before we head off and talk about this aircraft i just wanted to show you the uh, fiery scenery quickly this is a free update with sim world update 8 with microsoft flight simulator we've been live time live weather all of today i will just crank watch it i'm sorry if you're in a dark room on a widescreen tv i've just blinded you uh, welcome let's switch the cameras on the two here drone speed increases slightly so i can zip around there we are. This is an airport I've flown into a lot, um, and this is a free update. I think a lot of people forget a lot of work goes into these sim world updates. I, for one, took it for granted, but the detail, I mean, it's, well, it's payware quality. You get a payware quality update for free in the sim. You get all the stand numbers, all the news remote stands. I've been to Faro before. The terminal quality is absolutely perfect, as is the advertising on the air bridges. I can't even go in the terminal. Oh, I need to drone cameras uh, on super speed here. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> That's amazing. I actually get the air bridge across. So you have to tune ground and ask them, don't you? Yeah, that's my fault. I'd parked too far away, but it did it did connect earlier. But yeah, look at that. You can see it from in the terminal. This is a free update, guys. We'll be coming back here when the PWG is released. Uh, I mean, I didn't realise how many free airports have been updated with all the sim world updates. There's loads. Amazing. <laughs> Superb. Anyway, that's one of the reasons I wanted to fly into here, because it was a high detailed airport. Very quiet. Well, that's some those. Sure. Shame we didn't get any ATC, but enjoyable nonetheless. Anyway, yeah, I don't have any replay mods installed, guys. I will look into perhaps getting that as an option. I know Microsoft Flight Simulator can do it, but it involves going in dev mode and pressing record and whatnot. And I think there is a payware one available as well, but uh, yeah, it was cool. Um, 
Firstly, thanks to Just Fly for sending me a pre-release copy of their work in progress beta BAE 146. I think they're doing a superb job. Um, really approachable from my side as well when I had some questions today on email. I've been 30 minutes or an hour replying, answering my queries, which helped. Uh, give me some uh, information for you guys as well. And I'd like to thank the guys from the dev team. Uh, Martin, who came in, who's flying cams and sort of just flight as well to help answer your queries. The aircraft will be available, I believe, in April. Um, it's already, well, if you want to fly conventionally like I have, ready for release, they just need to continue to fine tune sort of to drag, which is not really there doing its Microsoft Flight Simulators. Um, but it got here, we saved a lot of fuel getting here as well. But the actual 146 experience has transferred really nicely uh, from the X Plane version, which I love. I love flying that aircraft. And, and this is an aircraft we'll, we'll fly again uh, for sure in Microsoft Flight Simulator. When the FMS gets updated or just before release, we'll, we'll jump it in again and we'll be good to compare. Welcome. And if you'd like more information about the aircraft, check out the video description below. There is a link to that. Anyway, I'm on my way out. I'd like to say thank you to everyone that popped in. During the stream to all our members, thank you very much for the continued support to everyone that donated. Thank you very much for your generosity. And to all the regular viewers and subscribers, thank you very much for popping into another Flying Deck Sim live stream. If you'd like to like the video on your way out, that would be a great help to the channel. And next aircraft, very likely to be the uh, Wing 42 Boeing 247, which is now in my virtual aircraft library. I do need to install it. And that will either be on Sunday afternoon or, if not on Sunday, on Monday. Uh, guys, uh, stay safe. All the best to you. Have a lovely weekend and I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.